and we're live to go through the roll position and launcher position in the uh, ILI. And it's going to be uh, SI roll and FI launcher, or more accurately, ethics of relations launcher. So on the subject of emotions, though, I thought I would show just this little bit, because this character in Blade 7 is very uh, ILI-ish. And this is, a, is it's sort of about the way they express emotions. And so this is the original line that caused it. Blake is sitting up in a tree. Travis is sitting up in another tree. Unless they're planning to throw nuts at one another, I don't see much of a fight developing before it gets light. So it's just like stating the facts and then somebody saying, you're never involved, are you, Avon? You ever cared for anyone except yourself? So this is what people think of INTJs. And then I think this line from Avon really sums up their emotions, and I'll get Enrique's thoughts on this. I never understood why it should be necessary to become irrational in order to prove that you care, or indeed, why it should be necessary to prove it at all. So what do you think of that, Enrique? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't, yeah, that, that makes 100% sense to me. Uh, yep. So it's always puzzling. Like, the, if, if you look at the facts, it tells you everything you need to know. You don't have to... I, I feel like, um, uh, to me, emotional uh, content seems to cloud uh, things. Uh, it, it makes things uh, not as clear. Or maybe to other types it makes it clear, but to me it just clouds, clouds things. <clears throat> right then, so I've shown this to people. This is a bit uh, abstract. So what I'm going to do is, okay, if I show this this graphic, because this is a bit more simplified. So we're on the roll position here. And the key thing about this position is that it's it's seen as a weakness but it's not seen as completely useless. <laughs> Is that fair to say? <laughs> Enrique? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I, I can see how uh, the role function uh, can be quite useful in many scenarios. And for me, the role function would be sensing or SI. Um, and yeah, it's... It's not something that I particularly care for too much, but I, uh, late as of late, I've been trying to pay more attention to it and give it a little more, give it a little more of my focus. Yeah, especially especially the way Socionics defines it as um, comfort sense. And I actually believe personally that is the right definition. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't like if if I have to get something done. Right, that's particularly uncomfortable. I, I really don't care about being uncomfortable. Mm. Uh, I'd rather just do it, get so, it done, and get it out of the way. So the the um, whatever my goal is, or, or whatever I'm trying to do with whatever system I'm working with, uh, it's independent of my comfort. Right. Um, in a bit of theory here is that because uh, INTJ is a right spinning type, then the SI is going to be SI minus. So that first one there, so in this one here, the NI and the SI, they have the same charge and the same, yeah, they have the same charge. So for example, ILI being a negativist type, uh, both of the functions of their mindset, their sort of like introverted perceiving mindset, the receptive adaptive mindset, both of those are minus. So SI minus, according to Victor, is about minimizing discomfort rather than maximizing comfort. So it, I, would, I would think it would be about the ILI concentrating on staying healthy rather than going, rather than wallowing pleasure. 
I would think that their version of pleasure pleasure would be more in the extroverted sensing kind of like them enjoying a challenge uh sort of like like when you play your did you say it's handball handball yeah that would be re is that relaxing to you it's it's challenging right because it's a really small ball you have to run to get it uh, you don't know where the other person's gonna hit the ball to uh yeah it's it's very challenging and uh and, and nothing's comfortable about it right <laughs> it's it's actually uh a lot of times uh, you you have to uh the shots the really hard shots are rather uncomfortable right you know? well i'm glad you said that i'm glad you corrected me there because it gives you an idea of what people say about the quadra differences of pleasure for uh the intjs being the pleasure is in the challenge uh, oh, maybe the pleasure comes from the adrenaline buzz, the dopamine buzz, yet at the same time, you feel the struggle and the exertion. Yeah, the dopamine, I think, for me, I, well, yeah, I'm not a biologist, so... I, well, I, that good, I, that's a good feeling that you get. Whatever it is, you get a good feeling with the challenge. Is that fair? Yeah, I get it. I get it when I overcome the challenge. And I, I also get it when I'm being challenged and I see a high probability of uh, me winning in the future. Right. So, yeah. So, uh, SI and NI are both uh, the receptive adaptive uh, functions. I'll just say a little bit about that. Uh, here it is down at the bottom. So, Yes, oscillating energy. Um, so these are very, these are dynamic functions. Very, I would say it's a pretty, it can be a very introverted function, SI, even though it's based on sensor. It depends how far you go with it. Um, but NI, I would suggest, is the most introverted function. It is the most internal because not only is it, I mean, I mean, TI and FI, you can say are your internal thoughts, but that's still conscious. Whereas NI is like further back in the unconscious, and you just sort of get the end result. And so you can, so you can get that feeling that you're right, but don't know why. And that reminds me, you wanted to say a little bit more about NI. Oh, um, right. I, I was I was thinking about it, uh, and I don't know. Just stuff just started coming to me, and uh, I think, uh, and I have I have this idea that uh, and I uh, helps with avoiding knowing when to avoid things that are a waste of your time. Uh, it, it, there's, there's this, uh, right. I don't know, like when, when, when an idea is posed to me, Oh, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. I, I, In, in, in a lot of cases, I, I, I have a, a strong sense of what is a potential waste of my time or not. And, and, and I, don't, I don't go with it. And I, I, I suspect that it's... Uh, so that's a very logical thing, right? I, I suspect that the same is, is for uh, um, IEIs. What are you? But perhaps, but perhaps in a... In a in an ethical sense, perhaps they define a, a, a waste of time uh, as something that doesn't give them uh, uh, some type of uh, ethical payoff. So, Sana, who, 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 who is, I mean, what is my type? We don't know your type for sure yet. <laughs> so, it's hard to, hard to, 
we can't really use you for the detailed uh, you know, information because we have to type you first. Oh, okay. But I'm IEI, so that's uh, something Ben seems to agree with, at least. Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, so, because... yeah, we've, yeah, I would say pretty much, very much resembles that type. We've talked quite a bit about being directive and uh, enacting and, uh, and the role of uh, counsellor. Uh, ah, so, uh, so, so it's fair to say that, in my pre uh, my opinion, that Sana is predisposed to the role of counsellor, and that even when uh, the IAI is not a uh, a professional counsellor, they sort of fall into that mode in their private lives of advising people. So it's just a natural predisposition there, just the same way with say, LII. Well, it has a natural predisposition to be to analyzing things, even if they're not in the professional role of analyst, they're still going to be doing that thing. They're still going to be analyzer. Okay. And so, when somebody is doing something like Enrique, where their role enactment is very similar to their predisposition, then you're going to get a feedback system, and they might seem more like their type, like the the sort of like the stereotype of the type than say if they were enacting a different role. So somebody like Haley, who's into modeling, that looks quite different from the stereotype of ILI. But the way she goes about it, the tremendous amount of research that she puts in, and her reasoning about it, that's where her preferences come through. So sometimes there can be a difference between preference and behavior, or especially the superficial outer behavior, whereas when you get uh, closer to the person, then you see that other behaviors are the more consistent, their uh, overall preference. So that's just a little distinction there between somebody's type and somebody's role enactment. Um, so getting back to this, both of these are dynamic functions. So. I will ask Enrique and then Sana, how do you think NI is dynamic for you? Are you both moody so-and-sos? Do you, or do you feel like you're sort of riding a wave of something? Well, yeah, there's definitely uh, some type of, it feels like a, an internal pulse. It's just like high energy, low energy, high energy, low energy. But even when it's high energy, it's 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 perceived as low energy. <laughs> that that intrigues me. You know, so when you have your low energy state, do you feel that you are in more of an NI mode? I'm wondering if the low energy is due to the NI because you're looking inwards. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah, so it's like I, I, I go through this motion where I'm I'm getting things done and I'm I'm uh, accomplishing whatever whatever my goals were for the day, and then there's this like rest period where I just kind of chill out, and uh, yeah, it's very uh, I tend to introspect a lot uh, during this time and it's it's almost like the the energy goes from outward to inward and uh, I probably start planning for tomorrow in my head or maybe I have to try to see if, uh, yeah that's when I and I uh, the most I think during those I mean it's always on but at least that's that's when I notice it. Right, uh, that is something that's not I've not heard said in another video. That the actual low energy part is actually intrinsic. At least the external and it's, it's low energy extent is actually intrinsic to the nature of the function itself. What do you think of that, Sana? I mean, I think you heard you may have heard enough of what Enrique said to get the gist of what um, you're saying. I, I 
I kind of because I um, uh, what was the uh, question? Right. Okay, I asked him um, when I was asking about the low energy, and uh, Enrico was saying that he oscillates between low and high energy, and I wondered in those moments when he was low energy, did he feel it, feel he was doing more? It was in more of the ni mode. And that made me think that it's intrinsic to the function that when you are sort of going into yourself, doing the tapping into the unconscious, doing the unconscious process, that is, it feels like a low energy state in terms of physical low energy, but maybe the mental energy of going into that mode. So it's almost as if. I've not got much energy today, but I might have some good NI moments. I don't know. It's, it feels like it's intrinsic to the nature of the function. So is it like that, like that for you, Santa, where you feel all oh, in an NI mode and you're sort of the, the well, way your I, energy I is say, might be different? Well, I probably define low and high energy a little bit differently. Um, right. But I would say that... I have more energy to spare when it is a um, NI um, ethical NI issue. Like I don't really almost ever run out of energy when I'm dealing with that kind of topics, unless it is somehow emotionally draining. But that's different. So um, yeah, I would say that I I just, I just simply have energy to put into that into that kind of um, stuff. Can I? Yep. <laughs> no, because I uh, I think uh, for in my case, uh, and I is present uh, with high and low energy and the assumption that you said that an eye is more related with the unconscious and this is related with low energy, I think it's not correct because the unconscious can be also present when the conscious is present. I mean, uh, the, to be conscious doesn't mean that your unconscious is not working. Yeah, that's, and, more, um, yeah. that's more how extroverted intuition works, where it's like, almost like when that's working, when any is working, there is more energy coming out. You see, you can see the process when they're getting excited. Uh, I think David Cozy Jr. called it getting flaky. So any any almost shows more external energy. And Dario has shown that in the EEG activity. That, or at least when people are doing transcontextual thinking, which is a a species of any, but there's probably other kinds of any. But at least when they're doing that, the brain is like super active. Um. But I think it might be the kind of NI that is maybe specific to people of this mindset. When people right. are NI DOMs and SI DOMs, um, they are a bit more absorbed into their own experience. Um, it can be very tricky with, um, with the SI DOMs. You have to know them quite well to see their energy level because it's a bit like with Enrique, how he spends his energy well and is productive. And so, if you were judging somebody based on their productivity, you would say, Oh, they've got a lot of energy, they've got a lot done with that energy. Um, and with the SI DOMs, it's like I may have mentioned this last time, yes. They, I mean, Dario, the way Dario talks about it, there's part of what he says about it actually relates to Socionics SI. They like to do things at a slow, comfortable pace because they don't like that challenging thing of being pressure prompted. Whereas the SE valuers, they like going up against the clock. Do you think that's fair to say, Enrique? That the SE value is like like a challenge, like even like in little things. Um, the SI like slow and even. 
and se lights and the se lights to be pressure prompted so that, that yeah, might be i would i would agree with that yeah and it also might so, be one of yeah go on yeah it sounds like dopamine versus serotonin yeah yes yes not yeah. in research the si value is pretty much related with the serotonin Yes. And the dopamine with the extroverted yes. sensor yeah. ones. Yeah, I should point out that we do have a scientist here now. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, so she's, uh, <laughs> she's a pro. But when it comes to um, the topic at hand, I definitely get stuff done mainly because of deadlines. Yeah. I mean, that's the reason I got Marcia's painting done. Yeah. I knew that she was coming, and I had to <laughs> get it done. Right. Whereas the SI DOMs and the 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 SI DOMs will they don't like the discomfort of pressure. They like to do a slow, even pace. So it's avoiding the discomfort of the challenge. Whereas with the SPs and SE values in general, SE max types and the Basically, the betas and the gammas, they <laughs> like the challenge because that makes it more interesting. Can I get it done on time? You know, I was uh, I was thinking about what you said about um, types and uh, I guess the role they play in, in society. Yep. And, you know, having a, a job that matches your type, like in the case for, for me. Um, and what would be the difference if, uh, let's say, I was doing uh, some type of work that didn't really, uh, that I wasn't predisposed to be good at or, or, or easily learned. Um, and I, th I think that if you, if you do something that matches your, your temperament, uh, it's easier or, or it's faster to reach uh, unconscious competence. Right. Uh, yeah. Because I was, I was, uh, and not that, uh, not that you can't reach it with enough practice. You, you can, but uh, I remember, uh, I recall, I, I was, I was uh, typing code. I was working, and uh, I, I had been working for about what uh, eighteen hours that day, and uh, I was so sleepy, so tired, and I was doing something rather difficult, but it still got it done <laughs> and it, it everything worked it's like i don't have to think about it because i've been doing it so long and my temperament is predisposed to doing this type of work so yeah i think uh things like that happen uh, easier in that in that scenario so when you say temperament because i think both apply here do you mean the kersey temperament or do you mean like the galenko mindset of like I little P, or do you mean NT? I, think I was just both fit. Yeah, I meant I meant NT. Right. That's okay. What I mean. But I, I I think it would fit either way. Yeah, yeah, I do as well. So for instance, an NT that's like ENTP, they might get bored a little bit quicker. But mm -hmm. again, they're also they like a little bit of pressure because again, that's something about the EP temperament. Even uh, the EP mindset, Zoe, flexible, active, where they don't value extroverted sensor, but their mindset sort of does a little bit because they can sort of tap into that role function. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the NE DOMs like to leave things to the last moment as well, and uh, they can be quite good under pressure. So the mindset can be very important. Um, it's just with the introverts, it's very, it can be very hard to see, and that's why the JP questions of a problem uh, for introverts. Uh, okay, so because uh, I've got the SI and the FI slides combined here, so I'm just most of these are the uh, FI ones. Oh, this is interesting. So this is Carl Jung writing about uh, types. Uh, now somebody once used. Uh, Somebody used like one line of this to sort of like disprove types, but the whole the whole the whole quote gives a different impression. Uh, 
right right okay so people can read that they don't need me to read that out um yeah, Carl Jung was never happy about classification of the types uh, to, to do in classification, uh, like for the entire life. Yeah, I was yeah. reading this paper that he was uh, happy with the, let's say, MBTI, but till the midlife, and then you start to get into the opposite. Like, it's more or less kind of Socionic idea or not? Question. I don't know about socionic. The thing is, how do you know he was happy? Ooh. Ooh. He Call was happy him. because, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think just she, said he was happy. I, I think it's, I think it's <laughs> interesting to see how, like, uh, the differences between how. Uh, an ethical type and a logical type communicate. Like, I would never <laughs> talk like that. <laughs> okay, okay. But I, I think this has some uh, notes to it. So it's like, so this was actually from, people want to see it, it's Victor Galenko Hangout number seven. I've not got the, uh, the graphic for it. This it is, there it is. If you look for this one, so you just type, if you just type in, Actually, if you type in within my channel, VG, hashtag number seven, you should be able to find it. Or just go to the Victor playlist, which is right at the top of the home page in the, the type pros shelf. Then this, so this, so we're asking Victor here what he thinks of Dario's version of SI. And there's certain things that come up that are sort of relevant to the function. So I will move it down when instructed. Or maybe I can try and get the whole... Well, yeah. don't wait for me. I've read this before, so... Uh, okay. Yeah, probably when we did it with Haley. But... Yeah. I cannot read, it's too tiny in my mobile phone. Right, okay. Too tiny on your, right, thanks for saying that because then that enables me to adjust it, not just for you, but for other people watching on mobile okay. devices. That's much better, thank you. Right. Right, so at least here, Victor is is saying that he is put in memory, that there's a memory aspect for SI for him as well. Yeah. Memory of experiences. <clears throat> I think it might be because, because it becomes so personal, because of the subjective nature of introverted sensing, that's what might make it more memorable because they're relating it to the personal thing. So it's like that thing of like the memory technique loci where you're linking it to something. And because it's made so personal and it's associative, that's one of the reasons why they have good memories, these SI users. Another one is because they tend to do the same things again and again. It gets ingrained. But I'm going to say what I said with the in the other hangout which is that this applies to all the IMEs it's just it's gonna it's just gonna differ regarding what kind of information is going to help you remember like if you take FI it's going to be easier to remember data that relates to relations yep so and with NI it's gonna be patterns so that's why I'm against uh, tying the memory thing with specific IMEs or functions, whatever, because I feel like we're just taking one of them, even though it applies to all of them. That's well, a good maybe, point. Yeah, go maybe the difference is how, right, this, the perceiving functions are going to if you attach the concept of memory to it, then it's uh, you'll remember what you perceived. 
and the uh, the judging functions, you you remember what decisions you made. So we would probably need yeah. to have some kind of research on that. Yeah. It, it, it might also be the more significant something is to somebody, the more memorable it is. That's that's exactly okay. You just yeah. said what I was trying to put into words, yeah. and you said it a lot better. <laughs> Right. It's something that is like NLP can help in this in this way because it was like just the sort of the sort of the because it, the way NLP talks about how people delete most of the information that comes in from their senses mm -hmm. because it's not imp it's just not important and only when oh. it's it's like something there something can be there that's very important and it's like if you watch a film and then something was in the background. And then there's something that's revealed later on, and then you watch it again. You have that hindsight that it was there all along, hiding in broad daylight. But it was sort of it. But it didn't. But your attention wasn't drawn to it. But it was there all along, because at that point it didn't have the significance that it did on the second viewing, when you have the the vision of hindsight. Yeah, I, I tend to forget a lot of important things. <laughs> Uh, uh, I mean, it could be that maybe what I consciously think is important, unconsciously, maybe it's not important to me. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Right, so this is pretty much just uh, standard stuff. Uh, have you read that, Marcia? Hi. Uh, what? Have you read this text? Oh, yeah, no, I was just uh, thinking. Okay, yeah. I will uh, give me one minute and then change it, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, and then there's yeah, a little... I was... Yeah, go on. I was thinking in something that says, uh, that Enrique says, that... Uh, that this thing was not important for the unconscious. And uh, it's not like that. Like the unconscious, the unconscious doesn't value what is important or is not important. It's just all, always there processing everything. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, when you see the, that movie for the second time, probably it's all these things where processed in the unconscious and then appear again to the conscious. But uh, it's not that the, the unconscious doesn't filter, it gets everything. So probably yeah. the unconscious has all the, all the functions <laughs> at the same time. So, so we just select some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say that this is slightly related to the idea of the gap that Robert McKee talks about, that he says is the substance of story, and that is the gap between how you think the world is and how yes. the world actually is. So this is a little bit like the plot twist, but what you've got to do, though, in great writing, the plot twist personally affects the character, and then you see how the character reacts to the new information. Um, so you you get this so it, uh, at a cognitive level of oh you've just found out this new information that this fictional world isn't what you thought it was at this point so you get that so so that would appeal to the people so on a thinky level that appeals to people but then you get the emotional level of okay what is the effect of this surprise on the person and how are they going to react so when luke skywalker sorry for the spoiler here folks when Luke Skywalker <laughs> finds out that Darth Vader is his father, how he then reacts to that news, and then how he reacts to the news of being offered a job to depose of the Emperor, shows something about his character. So, I mean, if it had said, all right, Pop, let's, let's bump him off, you might have seen him in a different uh, light. All right, then. So... Let's get by these. So a little bit more. So we talked about the function, uh, comfort sensor. Actually, the definition of the function is is around here. Somewhere, actually, 
because I just wanted to say a little bit about the function before actually getting onto the bullet points. But I think because I just wanted to look at this little bit here about SI, just to sort of like give you an idea of how Victor defines it, and uh, we can actually ask Sana and Enrico whether the ingre whether they do experience it like this. So. That should be big enough for people to see on the devices of various sizes. So SI minus for SIFE. This type roughly corresponds to Kersey protector, which like is very good like in nursing, uh, taking care of people's illnesses. And then you get this other type, the SLI, which is more about their uh, comfort. So, have you all taken that in? Yep. Right then, so, uh, I'll ask you first, Sana then Enrique, so which one of these two matches you more? Do you switch between the two? Do you, there's one slightly more than the other? What are your thoughts? I have a little bit of trouble. If, I have a little bit of trouble pinning it down. Honestly, I don't really know. I think my, I think my motive for using SI is usually because there is something wrong that has to be fixed. Like I'm not going to be focusing on it unless I have to, and that's usually when I have to. What about in your art? I mean, you do like to paint pretty pictures of parrots. Mm -hmm. And does that give you pleasure? What, what is it about the parrots that you like? Well, my connection with parrots is kind of a, like a personal thing because I, I grew up with the parrot. So it, it's just, I don't think it's related to any, uh, any uh, functions or armies. It's well, just... I would say a bit of FI and a bit of SI in there. Maybe. I, I don't really know. I never thought about it in those terms. Right. But you say in there that is a good, good example, though, of how non-type factors can affect somebody. Um, so, Enrique, what do you think of this? Are you more SI plus, SI minus? Do you alternate between the two? Do you favor one more than the other? Uh, I definitely favor, um, I would say, process or uh, SI minus. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I <clears throat> trying to think of a good example here. I don't, I don't do it often, but. Um, I definitely don't seek to make myself very comfortable, but I, I, I don't, there's a threshold. Like I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, it's not so easy to put this into words. Uh, I'm willing to be uncomfortable, but if, if it passes a certain, a certain threshold, I'm going to do something about it. Right. But it's a very high threshold because my SI also gets activated in the presence of somebody with really bad SI. <laughs> and Enrique is one of those people. Like I sometimes feel obligated to try and get him to pay attention to SI stuff because he's completely ignoring it and he's breaking his body or, you know, doing something really stupid on the surface <laughs> because he just completely ignores it. So I feel like my SI is probably a little bit more active than his is. Um, Marcia, because you because you you are biologically qualified, what do you think <laughs> of the difference the male female differences when it comes to the hormones and extroverted sensor and introverted sensor? Like the dopamine and the uh, serotonin that I mentioned before. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't know. I am not an expert in uh, hormones, so I am, yeah, yeah, but I relate more, you know, dopamine with the masculine thing, yeah. but it's just like a personal point of view, but I should read more if uh, I can just uh, um, share more about this, because I am not a neurobiologist. Right. Um, yeah, I am working more in the field of uh, developmental biology. Right. So, yeah, but uh, I think it's more like that. Yeah. I am reading. I I think I am more SI plus, which is uh, yeah. I want to participate. <laughs> right. And just to remind people that it's like. You use both sides of a charge. It's just that people favor one over the other. And when it's somebody like Enrique, who's like very close to the pattern, the the ILI pattern, they tend to they tend to like jump through all of the rings when you go through the reigning dichotomies. And so it's like just statistically, that's like throwing like eleven heads in a row. Like especially when you give the reigning dichotomies to somebody who doesn't know what the correct right answer is for their type then um, it is remarkable when you get these people that jump through all of those hoops. But it tends to only happen when somebody is clearly resembling a type, in which yeah, case they... they resemble it so much there's no point doing a test. <laughs> the uh, the Raynan traits for uh, ILI, yeah. it, it matches me like 100%. It's, right. It's pretty... Uh, pretty obvious to me yeah uh... whereas there'll be other ones say they might have they might even have different role enactments they have a, have a sort of non an atypical ili approach to things due to various uh, uh non-type factors say they grew up in a family with a lot of children and stuff and they were required maybe to be like a substitute parent uh so there can be other things that come into play and whereas when they do like say the reigning traits, they might not score correctly. But I, I, I am of that position that when someone is clearly a type, when they then do the reigning traits test and they get them all right in quotation marks, you can then show it to the doubters of typology and go, see? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a graphic that I took from uh, the ENFJ uh, coconut shell that I did and I recommend that video folks because I was very I was quite systematic in that hangout and in to such an extent that Santa watched it all the way through um, <laughs> is, <laughs> is that a is that like a test yeah that's that's the test the Santa test um now actually I'll give so what Jack Aaron actually wrote these uh, actually did these out these graphics but they were quite blocky so what he actually did I thought it was quite funny he wrote relaxation in here twice. <laughs> so it was like a suggestive um, SI there. So I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what Santa would write twice in the uh, in the uh, extroverted sensing one. We'll get to that later in the in the, in the next hangout when we go over that self affirmation block. So, uh, do you think these are accurate? these themes of SI, or is it too simplistic? What's artifice? Uh, oh, it's just the surface of something. Oh. The outer appearance. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so far as we take all of these to mean physical attributes, then yeah. Right. Like physical piece. You know, like peaceful physical surroundings. Right. And so I would say it's accurate simply because I I You don't want any I, of them? I give minimal <laughs> attention to all right. of those things. <laughs> unless they're lacking. Unless it's impinging upon your health and your ability to get stuff done. Well that's yeah. it's important. I challenge you to try and get him to relax. <laughs> what if... I mean, this is pretty relaxing. Ooh, <laughs> high praise. So, what was I going to say about that? Uh, 
Oh yes. So this is a, this is a massive point, and this is the thing that that Sarah does not like about the definition of FE in MBTI, because <laughs> they do not recognise that their definition of FE is pretty much FE plus this stuff on screen. Whereas when FE is with extroverted sensing, it has a different flavour to it. Correct. All right. So this is like the SFJ kind of, the alpha quadra FE. So the FE that's directed towards other people. and We they can't tend to see be... the FE, by the way. Pardon? Yeah, me neither. We can't see the FE. Well, to... No, I have not put it on screen yet. Uh, because okay. that, that is for a subsequent hangout. That is for the fourth one. But I was just saying... Well, you're people... talking about it, so you might as well show it. <sighs> that's All fun. right, then. All right, then. <laughs> I will go over and get the graphic. Uh, I'll get the I'll get the actual beta quadra. Uh, I was waiting. He he put the graph. Right. <laughs> <See>? so, <laughs> I was uh, waiting. <laughs> station adaptation. Right. So this is the one that we did with. Okay. So copy. Is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. That's the right folder. Paste. Right, it should pop up. So these are now the beta quadra functions. And at least the the NI some of them will be similar. Right, so there, you've got the EFE there in the bottom left. Power of the C action. Right, uh, sorry, sorry. There we go. Oh, sorry. Oh God! Fashion drama. <laughs> and the UK is reacting to this the very nature of this function. <laughs> I love it. Passion, drama, emotion, charisma. <laughs> I mean, those four just like totally killed me. <laughs> yeah. Right. We're, we're, when we get to that hangout, we'll be going through exactly what you yeah, do not like about time. this. That's going to be time. fun. Right. So yeah. So basically. It's, so this is something to do with SI, is the way SI works with this stuff is, so if you think about the, the SFJs, um, the alpha SFs, um, they're focused on other people, but they tend also to be t focused on these things about other people. So that's why they can be, so you see what I mean? So it's like, they're focused on other people's needs, and the needs they perceive in other people tend to be related to these things or towards um, their cursy temperament <clears throat> kind of things that come into play. So about people being responsible and things like that and progressing, whatever is valued. So um, done the SI thing. Now, after talking about the function, we can talk about the position. And then we'll get on to FI after we've gone through the bullet points. So again, roll position. So minimum energy is just enough to get the basic stuff done. So just enough for Enrique and Sana to keep themselves in enough of a condition to survive with their bodily needs without, without, the, yeah. without going overboard. Because you do you see it as diminishing returns in terms Sorry. of like, if like, like people, if they concentrate more on their SI, it's like they have to put twice as much effort in to get like ten percent extra. Do you sort of see uh, it like that? I wouldn't know. I don't pay attention to that. That's okay. how I look at it. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it's it's, uh, it's uh, a lot of time and effort for a minimal, I guess, uh, output. Yeah, minimal improvement. Yeah. It's like a woman who will spend like so long on her makeup, like say two hours versus say half an hour. But that two hours might only have like a one percent improvement versus the half an hour. Yeah, or if like I don't know. For me, I may pour. I I pay more attention to uh, how things work, how they function, as yep. opposed to yep. how it looks. Like I, I don't really care how it looks. I, I care more about does it work? Does right. it right? Yeah, that's interesting. So that will play into the SI minus 
because minimizing health issues because the health issues will impinge upon the productivity so it's another reason why you're going to focus on si minus to the extent that it impinges your productivity is because you've got the te process there of i want to be efficient i want to get this stuff done so to the extent that my bodily health um impinges upon that plus i also want to do my handball thing so it's sort of done as a chore not in itself but for other reasons so to be productive and to order to play sports as well as you'd like yeah so yeah. you will stay in shape for that reason so so because it helps you be productive and it helps you um do your handball and then also there's going to be other, other reasons as well in terms of like instincts and things like that in any yeah but i i can see amongst the uh, the other players that perhaps value uh si for instance I, I remember this one time i went for this really, really low shot and i i scraped my my thumb and it was yep. like bleeding really bad and i just took some tape and i'm just like wrap it around and i'm done i'm ready to go let's let's play yeah <laughs> they're looking at me like i'm some kind of crazy person yeah but even i did that though i mean i mean i was once in a taekwondo competition i got my nose broke and i didn't feel it Right, I should have yeah. realized I was so dumb that I didn't realize I should have looked at the sequence and gone, okay, I shouldn't stand behind the guy who's six foot five because he's <laughs> going to be my opponent. I should not like, change places. <laughs> These days, I'd be more attentive to that. <laughs> um, what was the weird thing, though? And this would go into the unconscious. I did not know my nose was broken when I looked in the mirror. Only when I did a reflection of a reflection could I see that it was hor horribly bent to one side. So wow. my mind was like correcting my face. And that was a scary thing. As I was thinking, wow, the unconscious really can alter someone's perception. So it's yeah. almost the opposite of like body dysmorphic syndrome where someone will look into the camera and look into the mirror and see something worse than what actually is. So... That's just a little bit of proof there as a personal, my personal experience with the, un, the like reality being filtered. Interesting. Yeah. Right then, so social adaptation block. So you would prefer to stay in NI and TI. So the, the, the mode that you're in when you're at work. And yeah. but when you get a task where you can't use those two functions, and it requires SI and FI. It's like, oh, I don't really want to. It's still yeah. within my overall introverted attitude. So it's just quite wide scope of use. But, oh, do I have to? Do it, it I really have to turn off for this event? It, it, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when it actually starts to feel like work. Yeah. So your work doesn't feel like work. It's, the, no. it's these two that feel like work. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Right. So, stability in society without them, it is possible to function normally if the mission is not performed for any reason. So, however, and we'll get onto this in a moment when we go to FI. There's a little wrinkle with the launcher position where it's like it's weird the hidden agenda, but we'll get onto that in a moment uh, once we've gone through the bullet points of the role. I think, I think a good example would be like shopping for clothes yeah Shop, shopping for clothing like god i hate that yeah. oh it takes me forever <laughs> yeah and the and... ntj might like go out and get the same thing <laughs> well yeah i mean that's that's kind of what that's what i want to do yeah right but i don't know uh, see how bad it is for female the ntjs though where they're expected to have different outfits and they'd rather just so for them, it might be, okay, I'm just going to get five different outfits and I'll alternate between them. Yeah, it really feels like uh, SI, FI when I'm uh, out trying to get clothes because it, it, it uh, <clears throat> I guess I'm trying to find something aesthetically pleasing and I don't really care about that. So like my natural thing is right. to just get 
get a bunch of black shirts and be done with it right you know <laughs> what's weird is what this would so this is the super ego relation in this so this is going to be s-i-f-i -I for you s-e-i what's weird is when i get tired i actually shift to esi <laughs> and i get a bit like very um very uh very e1-ish um right then so so this thing here about it being a chore the function that is trained the way an athlete is trained by a coach or an actor is rehearsing his part, hence the usual name role function. And then so people can read that themselves. What might be hard to see is right at the bottom. You can compare this in the Beeb model to the demon stroke daemon shadow function. Now, in the Beeb model, they would actually have that as last because um but it doesn't mean it's the weakest because i've asked carol linden about this it, it appears to be that because it's the eighth function in the beeb model because the fourth function for intj in the beeb model is se flip the vertness and you get si so i asked carol about this oh no it doesn't mean that it's that weak it mean it actually can be improved so but it's just that you you will see some descriptions of the beeb model and one of them i looked at where it would describe this as the weakest function in the bead model. But no, that was incorrect, because Carol actually knows, has been on courses with John Beebe. Right, so people can read that on screen. I think I'm sharing it. Yeah, so it's going to be on the recorder. So uh, we've done the SI thing there. So. That's interesting. It, you said, well, it says there that uh, you need to keep training this function or it will lose its effectiveness. Yeah, yeah. You have to keep doing it. I mean, if you if you get out of the routine of doing the SI thing, then all INTP that loot that they have to. I have to continue to be attentive to, like, say, in Hangouts, like, attentive to the timing and not interrupting and things like that. It's something. It's something that has to be watched all the while. And if they, it's like, if they don't watch it, it then lose. It's not like, oh, I'm done. This is ready. I can then move on. You always got to pay attention to it. Yeah, that's um, kind of that's, that's been my attitude with it. It's like, okay, I'm done with this aesthetic thing. Back to you know, but yeah, I guess it it, it does require more, right. more attention. For right, me, so the just, aesthetic yeah. thing, as we call it, like picking clothes, it's very easy, so I don't suffer. On that because I, I know exactly when I see something I know if it's good or not I don't have to think about it well it could be I mean you 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 paint right so it could be that your your SI is more trained I think it's definitely more trained in that kind of area uh, like visual stuff because I'm apparently also decent at composition of paintings like I don't have any theoretical knowledge on it. I just kind of do it, and I know when something looks good. But it also means that it doesn't feel like work because it's automatic. And I don't have to spend any time on it. Mm. Yeah, I have zero to none tra <laughs> training and aesthetic. I I have no idea what what looks good or not. Um, yeah, that's got to be a pain. I can see why yeah. that would, would be so, annoying. So, Marcy, I'll let you, because I think you know quite a bit about Jung. That's sort of what I'm picking up. So I'll let you take that in, and then you might have some comments on what's on screen at the moment. Right. Why? I just think you, you might do, because I think I'm getting the impression that you, you, you know Jung quite a bit, the Jungian theory quite a bit. Oh, I said right. No, oh, no right. I thought you said why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I used to say why to everything, but uh, this time I said right. Okay, that right. was a joke. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I can barely read in my mobile phone. Oh, again. okay. So I will zoom in and do extra, extra yes. zoom image. Thank you. And then I will move it down yeah. when instructed.
I'll just say that bit right there. Mm. Massive first sentence there. For Jung, the introverted type is guided by the intensity of the subjective sensation excited by the objective stimulus. The way David Kersey talks about associative speech in the in the Guardians and and the examples that he gave, it showed me that they will it, that the SJs are doing the associative speech on a tangible level. So it's like they see something and it hasn't that it is it's significant to them in terms of their memories. This reminds me of this because my grandfather had this thing and it takes them back to that time. And so it's associative on a tangible sensing uh, level because it's like it's so it's it's their perception of the world. It, it, it's got this objective filter on it. Of course, every sorry, or subjective filter. Of course, everybody is, has a subjective filter, but for them more so with the guardians. And so that is a kind of an example of how that can show where an SJ will go, oh, this reminds me of the time. Oh, I remember them when this, because though their memories of it affect how, what they're presently experiencing. So that subjective filter is coming into play. Also, yeah. um, this is why they like reading description in novels, because they're obviously filling so much in with their personal experience when somebody is reading some reading some description in a novel. Especially if it's very long, as in Game of Thrones novels or Song of Ice and Fire. All right, now I'll let you absorb it better. I just wanted to get that in. I'm still reading. Okay. Yeah. So I understand that the uh, objective and external world is important for both the the introverted and uh, extroverted sensation. So meaning that the external world is uh, important for both, but for the yeah. introverted sensation, it's like the starting point, and yeah. then this starting point come into the inner world, and then in the inner world do more and they do all this experience uh, get inside and yeah. Uh, yeah but for the ex external the extrovert sensation this should be external and keep external right. to be important what i would say though is that it depends on the thing that's being looked at so for instance if somebody looks at if an sj looks at something that's very significant to them something that has a tremendous amount of memories associated with it then it's going to be more more subjective for them than they see something that they don't make any connections to then it's going to be more seeing it in like an extroverted sensing way because there's nothing there's not the, as much of the subjective filter onto it it's not as significant yeah but at, at what point something uh, become you know experience so the experience at the beginning or the si at the beginning was SE, you know, because yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, so he should be also uh, good in SE because part of yes. all the information yeah. that uh, SE information will be kept uh, into the memories or yeah. yeah. So Which is a principle in socionics. If you are good at one yeah. sensing or one intuition, then you're also good at the other. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. at, at least one aspect of it you got at. So, for instance, I asked Jeff about uh, extroverted sensing in uh, in Guardians, and he said, yeah, they can be pretty good in the moment. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, every now and then you'll come across a sports person who is, like, SJ-ish, and these tend to be the ones that, like, really co focused on technique. And I think you said that as well, Enrique. Did you say you played with some players who you thought were Guardians, SJ? Yes. What are they like in sport? How do they differ from you? Um, yeah, they, uh, they're very technical about it, I would say. They, um, it's easier for them. 
Ah. In which, in what sense? Because I, I feel like they're. Uh, it's easier for them to be in the moment. So they they have. Uh, they appear to have uh, faster reactions. Right. This is good because there's always like these little things that come up that make me sort of nuance my understanding of things. So I'm thinking here that one of the differences between the way the SE, uh, the SPs and the SJs are going to be, just to use some, you know, just to, you're going to have to take it, folks. That that's what I mean. I mean, SE max types and the SI max types. As if we're using the cursy types, that being in the moment, I would imagine that under the greatest pressure, the SPs would be better than the SJs. It's just that the SJs, it's easier for them to get into that mode and concentrate, whereas with the SPs, they need to be pressure prompted. So it's like, would you think, Enrique, that the bigger the match, the more the pressure, the better the SPs will do? Um, or would it be a situation where there might be a certain level of opponent where good technical fundamentals are required? So this is sort of like a combination of both, where the SPs might be a little bit better at their, their temperament, their mental approach to the game, in like having the and having the mindset for a high pressure game, whereas the SJs, as you think, for like getting the technique right and having a technique that holds up under pressure. Yeah, so you, I, would, so you, I would agree with that. So you're yeah. pretty much going to see good players of like the, the SJ version of a great player and the, and the SP version of a great player. I just think that the SJ version would be more consistent, whereas the... Um, the SP would rather have those th those bigger sort of like final MVP kind of performances. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the the players that I suspect the value uh, force or SC they they definitely uh, they always do well when uh, they're under a lot of pressure or it's like one more point for the win. You know, yeah. like. The, those type of moments yeah it's like also, their body their body just knows yep. what to do there's no they don't have to think about it. it at least that's how it looks to me right i was just uh someone was calling me over facebook without sending me a message first i declined it no, right so um so yeah like i said it's so this thing about being when we talked about being in the moment so like i said it might be more of a, a repetitive so, so so that the greater the pressure it might take them a little bit out of the moment with the sjs because they're used to doing the same thing again and again um anyway we, we we went over that so do you does everyone pretty much agree with what young has written here at least as an aspect of si no, or makes rather, sense. yeah right this is why SI is so tricky. It's got like <laughs> two or three aspects to it. And I think all of them are pretty true. Um, now we can... Right, oh, okay. This is just an example of... We did a lot of this more with the... Uh, but I think this, uh, this is the SI. To me, this is an SI value. To me. This <laughs> is an extreme version. So, SI, FE... <laughs> <laughs> he does not have to smile like that. <laughs> I just think it is. It, SI is a thing. <laughs> My combi reacher. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about the comfort. I don't want to bend down. <laughs> the only drawback is Amazon now suggests items such as incontinence pads and mobility aids. Because <laughs> they think it's a bit old. <laughs> Right, litter picking heaven. I mean, who else but that? <laughs> <laughs> right, and then what was funny in Homicide Life on the Street, they had this this villain, and there he is. That's where he, there he is. There he is. And you know what he said? And with pride, they asked him what they call him. 
and he said, they call me Mr. Clean. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Because Jeff was like, giving him as an example. Yes, Ben, there can be some SJ villains. <laughs> like, here, here is one. So he's like, he, he, like, he had all his drugs lined up immaculately <laughs> as a drug dealer. They call me Mr. Clean. All right. So... <laughs> I, I relate to that somehow. <laughs> yeah. You said that you, you clean to relax. And yeah, I clean to relax. Yeah, that's the way ah. my actually, apartment to suddenly shine. Right. Yeah, and actually, I was doing that. I was uh, <laughs> every day the way back to my house. I was picking uh, things from the street because I was not, you know, happy with. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. my, okay. my approach to cleaning is, I just avoid as much as possible to make a mess. <laughs> Yeah. That way I don't have to clean uh, as much. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's the NI, not thinking ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a little this is sort of putting it together. This is I did this for one of the Dario hangouts. You can see there, like 2015. So this is like trying to put it together. And then we'll get onto the bullet points after this one. So is that fair to say that like like you know when you were saying about the sport, do you think they the the, the, the kind of of um you know when you're talking about your SJ fellow players, that this kind of comfort zone that they like to get into? A limited set of behaviours to deliver a steady level of performance, usually without a sense of risk. Yeah. Whereas for the SPs, that sense of risk is what switches them on. And is exciter because for them it's like if there's no risk there's no point yeah i tend to enjoy that too though <clears throat> oh something i noticed though about the e the, the eg si types tend to have strong t6 activity so it's usually associated with ni when people are asked to do things and think about possibilities in the future but not well connected to P4. Ah, right. Okay. So P4 has to do with uh, possibilities. Let's have a look. P4, way many factors at once. And then number six is to see the future and symbolize meaning. So the SJs tend to think the future is just going to be one or two ways. Whereas uh, the NJs and the NPs see more ways and more trends going into the future. NI DOMs will just ignore ignore the, all the other trends and focus on one. Whereas with the NEs, NPs, it's like they see so many, they don't know which one to focus on. And they also have to think about the opportunity cost of, what well, if I pursue option A, it means I can't do B, C, D, and E. Right. So I've put some little things in here about some temperament things. Now he's based in the past. They don't like change. Can relax after I've done their routine work, then routine relaxation. But I also think they like to do whatever they do at a slow, relaxing pace, like Mr. Clean there, and probably Marcy. Yeah. Like, they don't want to do their cleaning at the last moment and rushing it. I like to take a, is that your case, Marcy? You, like you don't want to rush it, and you want to do it nice and slow. Comfortable uh, Hello? Yeah. Yeah? I'm listening. Can I say something? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening, but uh, it was uh, just, uh, it, it, it get uh, not uh, continued. Um, so I think I I personally got a lot of SE and, uh, I mean, SI, sorry, activities. And I think I use it to, you know, be distracted of uh, an eye. Mm. Yeah. Now I, I just get it because when I do SI activities, just, just a bit, then I can do more NI activities in a very more um, easy, you know, way. We're going to have to figure out if she's really any or NI preference in socionics. Cause... Well, I mean, you saw that she's SI preference. I mean, I know I'm just yeah, not taking one thing, but that's pretty important, like liking cleaning. I mean, that 
<laughs> yeah, I, I definitely, definitely do not do that. She yeah. can attest to that, I think. Yeah, I attest to that. <laughs> Although, uh, I'll say this. I'll say this. Uh, my, yes, I can like it, though. My, uh, my mother, she's a SI valuing. Yeah. And every time I call her, I was like, what are you doing? She's, oh, cleaning. <laughs> you know, and I, I, w I would, I would test her. You know, I, I'd call her like three hours later. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, cleaning. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Like, you know, when what is, is it ever voice? clean? What, it, what is, is the voice like clean? when she says it? I mean, it's not like mm, cleaning. It's not, oh, I'm cleaning. Like, oh <laughs> well, that's how it sounds to me. But she's not <laughs> happy, and you know, she's. You can just see that she, it, it, it relaxes her. So yeah. Yeah, it definitely does yeah. not relax me. Oh my no. god, it's, I, I, I cannot. I hate it. I, I cannot uh, relate to that at all. Right. It's a necessary evil. Yeah. So yeah, this, and it is for me. It's a starting point. Evil. Like to reach starting a place to start. Oh, oh sorry, I got. So for me, it's like uh, to reach a place to start something else. Right. I cannot. Uh, I cannot uh, be okay if some something around me is not like uh, clean or is not organized. That's very SI. Yep. Yeah. 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 I am not like that. Right. So um, there's a little bit of TI here in the one way to get the handle on the definitions of the functions is a little bit of polar thinking, but it's like thinking about how the functions are the opposite of each other can help you get to a definition. So we have seen how NI, I think Sam has come up with a new name for it that I agree with, intuition of timing. And so I actually read it somewhere. I didn't invent it, but okay, I thought it was a enough. really good term. So it's about the, the intuition of development, whereas in the behavior of SJs, they don't like the change. They don't like things to stay the same, at least externally. Internally, they're dynamic but they want the rest of the world to be stable so that they feel stable on the inside. So Marcia, I can ask you an SI question. Do yeah. you feel better on the inside when everything around you is organized and clean? Yeah, absolutely. But this, uh, like, uh, this way that, uh, need to be, need to have uh, like a peace, like external piece to get all the focus to start something from inside right um yeah yeah so, so if the feeling is better yeah of course it's, I, right. I i feel like uh i'm okay now and now i can start to do more things right but uh, i am not uh, a normal is i uh, you know yeah uh, well, I, th I think that's, that's, that's really the, the SI at play when she said, I'm, I'm okay now. Not right, really yeah. the act of cleaning, right? Any type can clean, but uh, it right. makes it feel okay. Okay in a subjective sense, it seems. Yeah, because what it is, is because, because although, although uh, ILI and IEI are dynamic, the way the, the with the SJ is they are dynamic. So when you like when you can combine Kersey and Socionics, you can see both things. The external behavior is it looks static, but the reason why they're doing it is it makes them feel better on the inside because it gets on their nerves when the, when things are not organized and clean around them. So that affects their yeah. mood. The only pleasure I get from uh, uh, an ordered environment is that I know I'm not gonna have to do it again. For, for <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was thinking, so Marcia, if you if you say you if something if you're in an environment where something around you is it's just not quite right, where like say something is not quite level, and yeah. like little things like that get on your nerves. Yeah. It's like a noise. It's like when you listen to music, and this music has uh, like uh, the the 
the vinyl discs, you know, mm. like a noise. So I need to get over this noise to uh, work or to do the things I need to do. Um, but sometimes it's uh, overwhelming. I need to uh, organize the things uh, um, to to be in peace. Um, in terms of there's a special socionics type that's not in Kersey. I could also call them the problem types. ESI also has quite strong SI related behavior. Having read the profile, there's lots, and so it almost sounds like a like yeah. a hardcore version of an SJ, the ESI. LSI as well. Yeah. Yeah. You said for me, uh, uh, if 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 my environment is not a, uh, I I organize because my I feel that my environment is inefficient or right. I, like it's not really for aesthetics and uh, it doesn't really make me feel good to clean or even after it's all cleaned I don't I don't get anything out of it. It's more like, oh, okay, now I can work faster. Right. So it's totally I, possible that someone else may view my environment messy or not as clean, but let's say it's like super efficient for me to like yeah. have this here and have that there. So that that's that's an interesting uh, good point. That's yep. an interesting and point. Can be also related with the um, FE because. Uh, when you do this, you get a uh, like a, a better environment for uh, others too, you know. I think the only way FE works for me is that I can be guilted into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, FE doesn't work for me at all. <laughs> so, I, it, may, it pisses yeah. me off. I hate it, but. <laughs> Then the person leaves and I quietly get to work because I <laughs> am still really bad about what they said. So, this has um, happened. <laughs> so this thing on screen was my attempt to try to integrate the different views of SI because we did three hangouts on it with Victor Galanco and Dario was in one or two of them. I think he was in two of them. And we tried our best to, this is me trying to integrate the different views on it. So it's like, it's like the NI likes to change in the developments and the SI people like to be in the comfort zone. And yeah, I don't yeah, I don't I don't think change is necessarily a good term for NI because it's not about change. I think uh, it's more about development as you said. Yeah, yeah. It's progress. Things are yes. going in a direction. Yeah. I think I think uh, yeah. NI also is not related with change. For me it's more like uh, this covering or take take out some covers yeah. to understand more but uh, not changes no. yeah i know uh, yeah i mean when i actually wrote the word i mean i was thinking of change in terms of development rather than change as in switching okay yeah you could okay, you like could re say, reorganization or organization yeah. Yeah. or you could say change over time yeah. yeah, which is the yeah. same as development or advancement. Yeah. It's evolution, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, but development uh, is not change. It's more uh, differentiate. Uh, it's more uh, being unique or, yeah. It's so, growth plus uh, being uh, specialized in something. Not properly change. It's more uh, mature. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Thinking like itself. <laughs> so it's like the socionist version of NI just concentrate on, I should have put development there and of course comfort yeah. and then the MBTI version would concentrate on stability and I just think you can sort of try to integrate them with the idea of comfort zone in that when somebody is in a stable behavior it makes them feel relaxed. So it's almost the motivation for the, for the the behavior is like due to a socionics reasons. So that's about as much as I can do on SI. With that, now we can go to the. Uh... Can I say something? Go on then. I, I just wanted to say about the comfort zone. I think for me, it's like I my natural state is to be relaxed, and I need that development or ear and eye development or the SE push 
to get out of that kind of stagnant, re relaxed state in order to get anything done. And so now, to me, the comfort zone is not a positive thing. Right. It's stag stagnation. So we, this is what we actually were talking to Enrique when you dropped out for a little bit, that physically you're not getting anything done, but when you're relaxing, that might be when you're actually doing the NI process. Yes, in your but to actually, put, to actually get any of that in uh, like in, get any results in the real world yeah it has to well the se has to be there as well yeah that's quite right yeah then working and this is something that linda Barons came up with and then and this is one of these things that has not been published in books that dario referred to this one of these things that gets published in say a magazine and a bulletin that's just for other typology professionals where she came up and with this idea of tandem usage of how these sort of like the dual functions work together. So the NI with the SE, the NE with the SI, the TI with the FE, and the okay. FI with the TE. I think that's how they have to be. Otherwise, you would be pretty one-sided. Yeah. So, But it's one of these examples of, of the kind of theory that Dario and Linda, will, the sort of stuff they know, but it, it doesn't have a business application, so it isn't something that's like trumpeted. Uh, because as you know, typology in the West is, is more commercialized and it's more academic in the uh, East. Well, at least it was in Soviet times. Now they have to be a bit more commercial. Um, so now we can get to the bullet points eventually. Um, that bit's important from Kirill Kravchenko. He thinks that the purpose of socionics is to get better at relations. So there he is, chaining up the role function, the role LSI in his case. He even looks like a like a he looks like a bodyguard. I have seen him in a video, right? So where are the bullet points? They are here. Right then. All right. So we went over the the definition of the function before, so we don't need to go. In fact. Don't want to get distracted with the FI. I'm going to put it right in the middle. We'll look at that in the future. Let's see how true this is. <clears throat> All right. I'll just uh, go to this little bit at the top. This is Victor's short definition of the function. <laughs> Might be a little bit stereotypical. Responsible for practical care of bodily needs, such as rest, nourishment, clothing, shelter, shelter etc. Et Right, right. Oh, yeah. I have, there is oh, a, there is an echo has occurred. Why is there an echo? Why is there an echo? There's an echo now. There's an echo now. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh. I cannot listen to it. Oh, no, no, it's better. No, no, it's better. Oh, oh, it's gone back oh, again. It's gone back again. Right, so let's so let's get that on screen. On screen. So then, uh, so then uh, Enrico, if, Enrico, if you read through them read cells to yourself and then to comment yourself. on, um, and comment um, on um, any one yeah, that, any one yeah, that, that prevalence, or prevalence, or prevalence. Right then, so, right then, so let's do an inventory of who's inventory been a naughty boy, boy or a naughty girl. So Enrico has been a good boy by having headphones in. Marcy has got it We don't know about Sana yet. We don't know about Sana yet. And I've got my yeah, headphones. Uh, so, sorry, I, I, you said what? Have uh, you got your headphones, got, uh, in? headphones in? Yeah, I cannot uh, hear you properly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you are, yeah, you've yeah, got I mean, your you, earphones you are, you've in. Got your so, earphones in so, so I'm wondering where the, echo, the, is where the echo is coming from. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's I'm you. actually... <laughs> no, I'm actually no, I'm muted. I'm muted, no, I'm on, muted. The I'm muted on the other one. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not me. Yeah, so it's not me. Oh, we can test it though. I will we shut my mic off and then I'll shut my mic off and then I think I need to leave now. Okay, Marcia. Okay, I'm not suggesting that you have to I'm not suggesting you I'm not suggesting <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, if I'm leaving and the echo is uh, it's over, it was my fault. Okay. Oh, don't feel Maybe badly. You, you made a good contribution. <laughs> okay. Okay. See you.
Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right then. So. Oh wait, you're a bad game. No echo. Anyhow, so now we are back to Enrique. So if you read through these, I got an idea. If you read, read if you read it out, and then you can stop and comment whenever you want to. Well, yeah, I mean that the the definition at the top. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean the minimal minimal energy on this for sure. Uh, well, for the past two weeks, I've gotten about on average three to four hours of sleep. That's yeah. not good. Turn into an ESI at that point. I'd be a hardcore ESI. Not good, but I, you know, I've, I had to work a lot, so I had to get it done. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, minimal energy on on all these things, uh, clothing, shelter, whatever. Yeah, I don't uh, don't value these things. <laughs> uh, I guess for me, like um, a shirt is just a shirt. Like I don't. Oh, this one's better. That one's better. They they have the same function to me, so I guess it doesn't matter. Is it uh, a little? I'll just say there's a little connection here with many ILI resemblers. <laughs> oh, there she is, both. They're both there. Also resemble like Enneagram Type 5, and Enneagram Type 5 can be quite uh, stingy. <laughs> and so seeing as you don't see much point to this kind of stuff, then you're not going to spend much money on this kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't. Not but at all. as a male NT, you might spend quite a bit on technology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell them that you're gonna have to know. So I guess I'll read Sorry. the first one. Yeah, oh, go okay. ahead. Marcia said that she's gonna find out more about the hormones, and then she'll uh, oh, excellent. come back. And, well, I mean, at at a later date, yep. she's gonna tell us more about it. All right. Okay, so. Uh, over time, ILIs work out specific routines and habits that help them stay comfortable and healthy. Uh, I would, I would agree with that. Um, it's minimal, but I, I, there are certain things that I, I do that are kind of a uh, how do I say um, step by step, like <laughs> no. Uh, wake up, brush your teeth, take a shower, <laughs> get dressed. I mean, you know, simple, simple things that uh, every person should be doing. Well, you've got um, white teeth, so you, your teeth brushing's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's been a, a recent development. I've been, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to take better care of myself. So, I need to. Uh... It can be done. This, the, the 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 function in this position, it can be done because it's part of the overall mindset of receptive adaptive of I little p of being introverted perceiving type. It's just a chore, but it can yes. be done. It's such a chore. Uh, I um. I I remember going out to eat to some restaurant and I was debating whether I should like get like dressed like like dress fancy <laughs> or not because the restaurant was like pretty high end and I knew everyone was going to be dressed but I didn't really care like I'm just like I'm just going there to try the food um but man I, ha I had to like fight myself for like about eight minutes <laughs> Yeah, and I, 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 I put a suit on, and I'm like, ugh, all right, let's go. Yeah. So, <laughs> I like, lie problems. Hashtag I lie problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything dealing with aesthetics, I, I don't. Uh, 
it's hard for me. I don't know why. Um, I can do it, but it's, it's, you know, you talk to other Boring. people. Yeah, it's, it? it's, there isn't anything intellectually stimulating about it. There's nothing to think about. Or and physically uh, stimulating for that matter. It's like, well, it's yeah. Just like to me, when I see someone well-groomed and well-dressed and they're, 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 you could just tell that they've put a lot of attention to how they look and, and it's like, all right, good for you. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in your head though. I don't know if you're actually intelligent. I don't know if you're a lazy ass or not. So, you know, things like that, uh, uh, it, it, I don't, um, you can use it as the tiebreaker between SLI and ILI, <laughs> or at least the yeah. cursy version of ISTJ. Yeah, like you don't you don't get points from me just because you 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 bought fancy clothes and yeah. you got a haircut. Like yeah, you wouldn't have liked the IBM culture where apparently you like this was about thirty years ago where you had to turn up and you had like wear a, a suit and the specific really rigid clothing. <sighs> Um, yeah, I uh, I used to work in yeah. Wall Street, and uh, they um, they required you to wear a suit every day, and it was it was it was hell for me <laughs> every morning because uh, it didn't make sense and it was very uh, inefficient. Uh, you know, it takes longer to get dressed when you gotta pay attention to all this crap. So. Uh, I suppose yeah. the opposite extreme is like when you see these like places where people work in the software and it's like they're, they're dressed a little bit too casually. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that can be a problem too. And that, and that you know, I, I understand that. But, um, you know, yeah. So what you want is like TE clothing. <laughs> like, yeah, although jeans, you might, a t-shirt. I once considered buying the thing that that says that it was like a cliche mentioned on wiki you know, i think of like wearing a vest that's got loads of little pockets on it I was thinking, <laughs> that would be useful yes <laughs> uh i draw the line of fanny packs though yeah yeah they just don't i mean useful but it just doesn't quite yeah right, good. that's that's that uh si threshold i guess all right um so how about you son if i'm number one Okay. You can see the difference between the two. I think I probably do have routines. And, I mean, I don't really think about it. I, I think for me it's more like I keep myself above this specific threshold so that I don't die. And yeah. then if something goes wrong, I react to it. But most of the time, I don't, I don't give it conscious thought. So I suppose that makes them habits rather than something else. Yeah, that's good. So it's like this is almost this function is almost the function in this position. It's almost like you got to get into the habit and stay into the habit. So that's like the bit about you have to monitor it and keep attention to it. Yeah, but I'm not looking. I'm not looking to consciously develop new habits or routines regarding SI. It's, it's just, just stuff that you know, basic stuff that I need to take care of, and yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So whereas, like, I, it's different though. In with this position, depends which function is. So, for instance, I think pretty pretty much people can get by. Um, like, say the sensing types, they don't. Then, the, in other words. Uh, I would say an SE DOM is not called upon to use any as much as the NI DOM is called upon to use SI because the Ooh, NI DOM has to do all this stuff every day, whereas the true. SE DOMs don't have to do the anything. Oh, yeah. well. Although I yeah. would argue that they do it when they are being adaptable and coming up with ideas of how to improvise in the moment. There's a sort of role function for any. All right. So 
Number two, there is a tendency to surround themselves with collections of favorite things and stock up on favorite food. Uh, yeah, I don't really do that. Um, favorite things. What yeah, what kind of mean? things? What, are, what does that even mean, favorite things? Well, what about your gadgets? What about if you think of NT men? Do you have like favorite gadgets around? Favorite. I struggle with that word favorite. Um, I don't. Uh, what are the things that you like? Any gadgets that you like and you like to keep them handy? You know, you do have the skull. That's very I like. <laughs> I think that uh, qualifies. I guess. <laughs> uh, gadgets that I like. I, yeah. Well, there's 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 gadgets that that work for me. Yeah. And uh, do I like them? I, I well, you know. like the the efficiency and the productivity like associated with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's it's uh, that type of language is cool for me. Oh. So a car advert for you would be. It works. It costs this much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, if it, if it works, then all right. I, this mileage, it. it's got all these features. Yeah. And, stuff. Uh, yeah. F favorite food. Um, I don't really stock up on. I mean, there's, there's, yeah, sure. There's. This implies that you cook. Um, yeah. No. This, because this is written by Victor, translated from Victor, and because it's written in Ukraine, and because he's like in his late fifties now or sixties, this may be going back to a time when there was less choice for things. So, if you're living in a culture where there's more choice, maybe this, that thing might not be quite as strong about stocking up on your favorite food, because in Soviet times, people did. That did have a narrow, narrower choice of things to eat. Yeah, the closest thing to SI when it comes to food. Uh... I tell you what, I'm having an SI moment right now. I'm just gonna gonna go to the little boys' room. So please continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm having the same problem that I had with favorite things, favorite food. To me, it's just stock up on food. I need to eat, so I need food. Done. Do you have Is specific foods that you always buy? I, I try to get um, foods that are nutritious and that have... Uh, there's an SE component to food for me. It's weird. Do you care about taste? Um, yeah. Well, that's SI. I like pizza. <laughs> uh. I, I, I do have... Um, but I don't stock up on pizza. I mean, that would just be... But that's only because because your uh, logic tells you that uh, you shouldn't be eating pizza all the time, isn't it? Yeah. Otherwise, you probably would. Maybe. <laughs> I do have several several different dishes that I regularly cook, uh, like less than 10, but I kind of slowly rotate between them. So I suppose that counts as stocking up on favorite foods, but I, I'm not sure that they're necessarily favorites as in Wait a minute. the best thing I ever had. Just easy. I just figured something out. Yeah. So maybe this doesn't apply to me because I don't really stock up on food, but I do, I do have a list of my favorite restaurants 
You have like a script, don't you? Yes, I have a. a <laughs> Um, I have a. I built a script. Right. On my phone. That, Here we go with the eye lie. Uh, uh, well, yeah, it 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 uses my phone's uh, location to determine where what area I'm in, and it chooses the uh, randomly chooses my favorite restaurant in that area, <laughs> and I typically go by this. Yeah. Um, I, I just think it's pretty awesome. I, I, I just noticed something I was thinking of this, and when, and I, and it made me think of preppers. So people who are like preparing for bad things happening, and then it made me think. Well, quite a few times, an ILI might identify as Enneagram Type Six, or if their instinct is self pres then number two is going to, especially stocking up on food, that's really going to come into play. But for like Enneagram reasons. Being yeah. prepared. And you don't have any six in you, really. I do. <laughs> no. I actually, I do have six in me. It's just that I think that my Not wing is counterphobic. I do have a lot of uh, cans of tuna. Ah, <laughs> it's all coming out now. How many? Yeah, <laughs> I got about eleven. <laughs> but that's, that's only because I, I try to minimize my trips to the, to the grocery store, so I, I buy in bulk. And there I, we I, go. Yeah, it's, it's, very, uh, it's very well calculated. It throws me <laughs> off if someone just randomly grabs one of my tuna cans, though. Yeah, do people do that? My brothers might. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Don't mess with people's food. <laughs> so, Santa, did you answer number two whilst I was away? She tells yeah. the stocks up. Hmm? She stocks up. Yeah, she stocks I, up. I said that I, I'm not sure that I stock up necessarily, but I said that I have a, a like a, I have several dishes that I kind of rotate through, and I suppose they count as favorite food. But they're they're not like the best thing I could ever have. They're just the best I can do while being incredibly lazy about cooking. Sa Sano, is it part of the culture in Finland that, especially in winter, being prepared? Like having certain foods in case stuff's not available. No, because the infrastructure is very reliable. Right. So it almost, almost never happens that you can't go to the store, right? Or that the store doesn't have something. Almost never. Right. Okay. So I was just wondering. Three. Yeah. <clears throat> when going out of the house. Uh, Okay, when going out of the house or going on a trip, they take along a certain minimalist supply of things to ensure they will be comfortable traveling. Uh, yeah, this language is difficult. Well, let me say first that yes, I do this. I, I, I just realized that I do have certain things in my purse or in my bag at all times when I go out. It's obviously going to be small things because I can fit them in there. But I think I do this. It and it's definitely the, about comfort. Comfort. Yeah, I have I have a when I hear this word comfort, I'm just like this. <laughs> well uh, it's it's not so much about, you know, being like seeking the comfort it's more it's more about the si minus about minimizing the comfort in case i need this i should have it because otherwise it's going to be very uncomfortable especially well, yeah. as a woman there are things that you want to have with you <laughs> when when i travel i definitely don't overpack i take the minimum minimum necessary so yeah that i i'd agree with that um 
certain minimal supply of things to ensure they will be comfortable traveling. Uh, I think about it now, and I guess I do do this. Um, I just don't associate the word comfort to it. Well, ignore the word and replace it with. If I remove that word, I I I I do that. Yeah, it's more and more about for me at least. It's more about uh, foreseeing potential um, physical trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So number four, try to keep things tidy, and follow accepted practices for self care. Hand washing, that I definitely do. Um, I, I almost, I almost never make a mess, um, and I, I, if I am in an area where there is a mess, I certainly don't make it worse, and I do wash my hands a lot. Um, yeah oh there's an example so in this case it's type related but that's what something's weird about donald trump even though very esdp he does have a thing like he's like he always wants to like wash his hands and he doesn't drink and people would say oh that means he's an sj no it's because his older brother died because of alcoholism and he thinks that he's got that addictive personality so uh, it is interesting how an ESTP even resembler can like be like a hygiene freak. With I hands. think anyone can. Personally, I don't really do that. I mean, I will do like the like the basic things. If I go to the bathroom, I'll wash my hands, that kind of stuff. But I I'm not uh, overly into it. Ah, I just remembered something. Catherine Father typed Donald Trump as self press. So maybe it's that instinct that's making him like, or connected with, I want to keep my hands clean. <clears throat> Don't want to shake the hands of these peasants. <laughs> um, okay, number five. However, they might get untidy when stressed or when being tidy takes too much effort. Have great appreciation for comfortable shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> comfortable shoes are a must. Uh, I, re I recall one time, uh, I think I was four years in on Wall Street, and I told my boss, I'm, I'm done wearing these shoes. Uh, I'll, I'll wear the suit, but I will have sneakers. Yeah, what you, you know, can like, do is you can look for the that kind of shoe that you mentioned, but like the way it looks black enough, or you put something yes. black around it. Yes, that's what I did, and whatever. He didn't like that's it, they should sell stuff like that. They should like basically has the comfort of that kind of shoe, but looks business like. So just do the whole thing mm -hmm. in black paper. Oh, are you listening, Nike? Yeah, why have they done that? They have done that. It's it's yeah. just the adaptation of these businesses that they still don't uh, accept it for whatever reason. I feel I, think... I don't know. I, I, I... Yeah. Yeah, go go on. I want to think about what I want to say. I think we had a bit of a conversation about heels when we did this with Haley. So yeah. women kind of get the shafts when it comes to shoes. I don't personally really like heels, so it doesn't make Never any logical them. sense why a woman would wear it's heels. For, it's for looks. It's purely for looks because almost all of them are uncomfortable in one way or another. The reason someone might say that they're not is because they have gotten used to it. Or they're convincing themselves that... No, it's just that like there, there is this physical getting used to process. If you wear, wear heels a lot, you start you stop feeling the pain, let's put it that way. It might also be because maybe the calf muscles got a little bit stronger. Yeah, you um, adapt. Yeah. You really adapt, and, and your skin toughens up so that you don't get blisters yeah. and all that stuff. But, I mean, 
a little bit of a heel is actually comfortable, but it can't be more like more than like five centimeters. So all oh, those nice. really high heels, they're they are gonna be uncomfortable. I don't care what people say. I don't so it, care what women try to convince you. <laughs> so, so in your case, it's not so much to be taller because you're already quite tall. I think you're about five ten, five eleven. Mm-hmm. So, but you're doing it for aesthetic reasons. Because of the if way I it do it, it's purely because the shoe looks nice. Right. The, the entirely entire reason. Right. So <laughs> there's there's the role SI coming through. <laughs> what, yeah, being yeah. honest about the, the well, I mean, it's like, and, and then, it's like the, sometimes there's these gender differences where it's like maybe you even have like an ENTJ female where um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of noise there momentarily. Yeah, um, that was weird. Um, um, so it's like even the ENTJ female might have a thing for shoes. Whereas yeah. in everywhere else, it's like, eh, it doesn't matter what it looks like, as long as it looks professional in terms of TE. Right yeah, then. there's probably some kind of, uh, I don't know where it comes from, because there's some this stereotype that women have to be into shoes. I don't know where it comes from. I think for me, it's like, that they're in it to varying degrees. <laughs> and most, even those that are like SI break, they're into it a little bit. But yeah, but where does it come from? Why? Like, because I, it's I think a thing. It, it could <laughs> be like a like social expe- expectation of women, honestly. Yeah, but it's like from a guy's point of view, guys are not looking at women's shoes and thinking, "What a nice shoe!" It's a thing that's generated yeah. by women. No, but but it's expected that women dress sort of like the way women dress is more complex. Than for guys usually, yeah, I remember and because it's more complex. You have a lot of different shoe options, I suppose. Yeah, but I don't know. A lot of it is women wanting to look taller. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I suppose I don't relate to that because I'm the tall one at the back that tries to look uh, shorter. Well, not anymore, but used to. Yeah. Right then. Well, so, go on. My my SI minus, I would say draws the line at uh with shoes i i i must have comfortable shoes oh yeah guys will wear lifts there's some guys that wear it's like built up on the inside so they get that extra inch oh and god <laughs> yeah it's guy, hard for me to relate to all that because i i just never i've never been that person that wants to be taller well, it's because you're about five eleven. Yeah, exactly. That's why I've never, I've never seen the other side because yeah. I, I grew tall very early on. So. Right then, so that is SI done, folks. We will now move on to uh, FI, and we'll do it in a little bit of a different way by looking at the position uh, first. Although I think what I'll do is go through the slides in order. So there's a little bit of a definition of FI. Uh, I'll let you both, well, San already knows it, uh, inside out and upside down. So if you read through that, Enrique, then you can sort of stop and comment on it. Well, that's the definition of relations as a, or that's R1. Yeah. Um, but if, you, if you go above that, and then you can sort of comment on how, and then when uh, it gets to R1, was, you can see how it's like different for you. Yeah, I was reading what was highlighted. Okay. Okay. I Subjective distance, yeah, I would agree with that. I think the second sentence of the second paragraph is 
a little bit debatable. To read this because I don't think I don't know if she realizes how FI works in Socionic. So um, I'll just be right back. Yep. Okay. Well, there's also yeah. the bit about I'll FI, get a FI is yeah. kind of like a a magnet almost. I tell you what, it's a bit like this. Uh, part of it in terms of once you've gone through this, I'll then show you the thing about rapport and how it, and how the the actual it, how actually the status of a relationship is judged. The actual mechanism of it. Any comments? Okay, on this. Well, yeah, um, it's it's not very easy for me to understand what I'm attracted to or repelled by. So for me, I, I have to go through this like figuring out process. Uh, I feel like uh, people that have strong fi they they have this information at at the ready they they know what they like what they don't like what's awesome what sucks they they, they know that mm -hmm. right away uh that, that information is not immediately obvious to me um but when i do see people uh that are good at it kind of like, like man how do you do that you know like there's there's this appreciation for it there's a little difference there folks the way you view si versus the way you view SI. oh major major difference yeah major difference so and here's a thing for you do you feel that if you improved your fi it would help with your te uh yes i think so how do you think it would help well fi as i understand it is the launcher for the ili so, so sometimes uh when i when i start thinking about something or I, you know it's like okay how, how do i how do i feel about it am i am i attracted or repelled by it and sometimes i don't know right so then it's like okay let's just go for it and that and i and i i apply all this n-i-t-e-t-i -E to it and you know let's say it wasn't it wasn't worth it right whereas right. if i if i was a good good at it better at if i I would I would be more in tune as to what I should align myself to and then apply my my dominant mental energy towards it right and I'll get on to because I want to go through these graphics in order we'll get on to it later on and it's it's Einstein's quote about uh, about what you choose to measure and how important it is so is there anything else you'd like to say about this slide Um, value. types of value and the value sensitivity to others' feelings. Value sensitivity to others' feelings. That is, that's a tough one. Ooh. Um, only because, yeah, people that I'm uh, close to, I guess it's... Can I try and phrase it? <laughs> Go I on. Think I know it. Hold on. You value Hold it on. because not caring about it will cause problems in the relationship.
yeah, it's a practical so approach. It's um, yeah, it's not easy for me to figure out, but I know it's important, and uh, I try to pay attention to it when I'm dealing with people that I'm close to. What do you think is important about it? Well, yeah, because if I totally ignore it, it, ca it causes problems. That's right. exactly what I just said. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm aware. Thank you. I used what you said. All right, there you go. So, Sam, have you got anything to say about this slide? Uh, no, not specifically. I mean, ask me questions. If you want, yeah. Um, one thing, uh, w another way to show how important the function is, is to show what it looks like when it's really uh, suppressed, not active. And so, uh, I can ask you your thoughts on this, Enrique. The bit that's in, uh, if you take that in, the, the bit that's highlighted in blue, then I can get your thoughts on it. So this is what it would be like if FI, so I'm talking to the audience now, where it would be really weak, a really weak function. So this, it's almost like you don't know what you've got until you've, until you've lost it. And it's sort of like, that's what it's like with FI. So it's like when you read this, it goes, oh, it is useful. Because <laughs> this is what happens when it's weak. Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds like it sucks. I've never known a person that was like that. I have, and it's it's not it's not a pleasant experience. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they exist. It's just I can't think of. I mean, my father, the uh, most likely ILE, he's not like this. Yeah, but he's a super ENTP though. He's developed, and so maybe along with the the developed TE. Maybe that's connected with a little bit more developed FI. I don't know. That was something that which would have to be studied. Do the people who have a stronger creative function have a little bit of extra in the break position because of the link between the two? It would have to be looked at. You're saying my TE shouldn't be as sucky as it is? Well, if your FI is really strong. Uh, my FI is very strong. Well, in, what about in the socionics sense? Yes, it is still very strong. Uh, it's just unconscious a lot of the time. Okay. But I am aware of it, of the results that come from it. And I have learned to appreciate the information even if I don't necessarily know where it came from. Yeah, but in terms of productivity, I would say that you, you do paint very good paintings. So... Yeah, that's uh, my idea, yeah. I mean, if I have a deadline, I'm quite productive. Right. There you go. Suggestive extroverted sensor. Mm -hmm. Any any comments on this from my review on the bit that's highlighted? Oh, I think you just said it. <laughs> you said you've known mm -hmm. somebody. So how do they show it then, Enrique, this kind of thing? Just pretty much as it describes? Um, yeah. is just uh, no attention to i don't know when i'm when i'm in a in a i guess uh people that i'm close to uh, it's 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 not required but it, it's it's nice if they could uh assist me in in figuring out how how i feel about things Right, and and so when 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 you have someone like this, it, it's they just don't give two craps about it, yeah. and uh, I don't give two craps about it, but not to that extent. Right, uh, you just uh, you just put other factors over it. Not that you don't care at all. Yeah, that's probably more accurate. Again, two points for Santa for. I, I may have 
I think you're a, a singer scenario. to owls about you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Largely with FI. Right. So then, so we got, so that was useful looking at that slide because we saw the, uh, so again, launcher position. So theory being here that very low energy, but ironically, very high sensitivity to it as well. Um, so I would suggest that, oh, wait a minute, that's, we have some theory here. Right How so, is that low energy supposed to show up with uh, TI for me? Because I, I never feel like I don't have energy for it. Okay, here it is. It's what it is, is uh, the the IAI sort of like has to be supplied with the TI from outside. So it's like they're not coming up with their own structures and their own designs for things. But like, mm. if they're reading it in a book theory, it's like, yeah, 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 because it gets the NI going. Uh, okay, so it's, okay, supply from outside makes sense. Yes, yeah. yeah. And it's because it, like, it stimulates your NI and it's like, oh, and it's like things going on in your yeah, unconscious. That's true. Ideas that's true. Yeah. So it is literally like that when you, when you say reading a book. So what are the kinds of things do you read that you think are maybe sort of launching your TI? Well, socionics for starters. Yeah. Anything with a system that I have to understand or figure out. So many IAI resemblance in socionics. It really is weird. I mean, because I look at the search terms, like so many times socionics IAI is searched for. Yeah, but there's the... also a lot of uh, IN types in, uh, yep. in uh, typology, period. So I don't think it's just IAI, and I don't think it's just socionics. I think you're right about that, because it's almost doubly abstract. You've got the subjectivity of the I and the abstraction of the N. So doubly subjective. Uh, so what have we got? Wait a minute. I need to go in a little bit. So energy is really low, has insufficient power to solve complex or repetitive tasks. It is unable to work for a large load. Its purpose is only to start a new circuit of mental activity. So in your case, you are doing the TI, but that helps with um, it helps with the overall NF temperament thing. Mm -hmm. Just being about other people and you're learning a system which is about people. Yeah, and about myself as well. Yep. Yeah, I, I do think that I dump a lot of things into NI. And just wait for it, for it to kind of make sense. Mm. So the expression, if you sleep on it, and then you sort of wake up with a new understanding of something, is that what it's like for you? The principle is valid, but in practice, it almost never happens while sleeping. Yeah. But the, the, the principle of waiting, and then it just suddenly shows up, yes, that happens. Right. Got, uh, just uh, click on my square a bit. Um, yeah, that th you know it says there paired with position five. I demonstrated Enrique actually mentioned that because you said that you would like someone to point out Enrique. You should care about this. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't care about that. That's not important. <laughs> Care about this and use your TE to me measure this thing, this thing here, this variable, measure this. Yeah, I guess it's it's more like not necessarily dictate to me what I should care about, but help uh, assist in uncovering. What, Point out what, the obvious? <sighs> It's not so obvious to me. I know, that's why I say it. But it's obvious to me usually. All right, so we have here uh, just simple stuff here MBTI equivalent tertiary, uh, model B equivalent, and then hidden agenda. Sometimes you can get a thing where you get the beneficiary shift. And this is where Maria talked about um, uh, they call it the loop as well in. Uh, MBTI. 
I don't know if the loop thing is valid for socionics. I just don't see it. Well, it's not quite the same. It's just a little bit of a beneficiary issue. It's, li it's a little bit different where it's almost the other way around in socionics well, where it, Maria said that sometimes when an ILI first meets somebody, they like to talk about their values and what they, they stand for. Um, and so they, they, in that mode, they act a little bit like uh, EII in that it's like FI with the NI in terms of the social mission block of that so it's like eii but without the ne well yeah the the, the launcher typically uh is followed by the dominant mm. right and of course ili would be more easily talk about their values because they're not going to suppress them because of because of the fe break they're not going to suppress their values this night like, i'm going to tell you how it is this is how I feel about it. And you're going to let them know. Uh, if you think it's, if you get the urge that you think it's productive for them to know, especially if you're correcting them, I suppose. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, criticizing someone's ethics happens once those, those ethics have been discovered. Right. So not just a critic with the TI, but a <laughs> critic with the FI as well. So it's like, I don't think you've got your structural logic quite right here. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think you're, you're internally consistent here with your ethics. So does that point you out? Uh, there's an example. Does hypocrisy get on your nerves? Hypocrisy. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I dislike it. Uh, because, yeah, lack of consistency, and I just think it's a crappy way to live your life. Yeah, whereas the ESTP version of it, it's like, it's called being experienced. It's called, uh, sorry, it's called being expedient. It's called being adaptable to the situation. Uh, every case is separate. They literally will see ethics as situation specific uh and then most of their ethics are going to come from the sort of the group cause all right if they buy into it and it it's their agenda. sometimes they buy into the group agenda because it gives them certain benefits rather than just being the rogue warrior so it's it's like these cultures where the person has to learn to like fit in and so it's almost like the SJs try to make them like you can be the warrior and you can go up this hierarchy to become the general and you will become George S. Patton, but you have to sort of fit in as well and channel your extroverted sensor. Mm. So that was a, a slight digression, but now uh, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't, so that's the model G's for every, for all the types. The ones in red are the ones that don't transfer over to Kersey. Um, this one is that's the actual bullet point, but I'll get back to them later. This I think is very important because this shows our FI. So I'll let you read through that, Enrique. Which part would you like to read? If you read it out from Think of a Time and then stop when you want to comment on it, because this is almost how I think FI works. Is the mechanism of rapport okay think of a time when you and another person were completely in sync <sighs> hmm. it could be a friend or a lover or a family member or someone you just met by chance go back to that time and try to think what it was about that person that made you feel so attuned to him or her yeah, that part is difficult for me. It's like, okay, we're in sync, but I, I, I seldom know why. Mm. Um, so I, it's, it's almost like I feel like my brain is making these FI decisions that I'm, I'm not... They're conscious decisions, but 
check it, but we can. I'm not aware of those details. Do that. Chances are that you found. Chances are that you found you thought alike or felt the same way about a certain movie book or experience. You might not have noticed it. Yeah, I definitely don't. But maybe you had a similar patterns of breathing or speech. Oh, wow. Maybe you had a similar background or similar beliefs. Whatever you come up with will be a reflection of the same basic element, rapport. Rapport is the ability to enter someone else's world to make him feel that you understand him that you have a strong common bond. It's the ability to go fully from your map of the world to his map of the world. Uh, this is the essence of a successful communication. Wow. Right, what makes you go wow? Um, I try to think of times where I was repelled by anyone really yep. and it was always because the person didn't understand me like that that would be the narrative in, in my mind this person does not understand me like i want to get away from this right. <clears throat> it's the ability to go fully from your map of the world Rapport is the ultimate tool for producing results for other people. Remember, we learned this in Chapter 5, The Seven Lies of Success, that people are your most important resources. Well, rapport is the way that you tap that resource. No matter what you want in your life, if you can develop rapport with the right people, you'll be able to fill their needs, and they will be able to fill yours. Yeah, that's not quite easy for me to develop rapport with people. I feel like it requires more... F.E. then right. I'm able to deliver. Yep. It's easier for me to develop rapport with people that don't value F.E. Or All people that... See, the thing is with rapport, it, you have to have the similarity with somebody. That's how that process works. Whereas when it's F.E., it's you're developing it around emotions rather than with F.I., I think rapport is a big part of FI. It's that bond. And this is why, you know that thing there about imagining the FI DOMs, and especially EII, they do a lot of this process. But because it's so subjective, they can sometimes project onto somebody. So it's like it can be playing with fire, from my point of view, where like as my role function, I see FI as that is a useful thing. But, you know, it's somewhere in between useless and relying on it too much. It's like, it's like the role function. It's the way you think about SI. It's like, it's useful, but it needs to be sort of like in balance. Because if yeah. it's too much, it's too subjective. Controlled. A performer, a good salesman, parent, a good friend, a good persuader, a good politician. What you really need is rapport, the ability to form a powerful common human bond and a relationship of responsiveness. Okay. So it's a deeper connection than ethics of emotions that you would get with uh, the FE types. Now, this, this comes from the book. This is a book by Tony Robbins. This book's called Unlimited Power. It was written in, published in 1986. It's cheap as chips, folks. And the PDF is available. And what he does is, and he doesn't try and hide NLP as something he came up with. On the front cover of the book, he mentions it four times. Right? Oh, so, he's wow. passing, so, the, so the Tony Robbins, he knows how to explain NLP in, in a way that is not full of jargon. So this to you, I mean, did it sort of like ring true as, oh, this is good stuff, Ben? Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's, it's practical. Yeah. The way it's written, so I'm I'm able to actually receive it. Um, although so there's there's still I'm able to understand the message, but yeah. it's like how do how how do I do that? I, right, I have okay. no idea. <laughs> so this thing about rapport is so this is going to work differently. So for the so it says there similar beliefs. 
So that's going to be a big thing for the NFPs, especially EII. The kind of connection that other FI valuers are going to get is going to be like with the SPs, because to them, ethics is more situational, but there's going to be certain instinctual things, a sense of right and wrong with the SFPs. As they might say, oh, that's not cool. You know, if somebody does something something ethically wrong, to them it's like, that's cool, that's uncool. I know I'm being a bit reductionist with the way SPs think and going like totally into cliches, but it's like they're not able to say as rationalize it into an ethical system the way the NFPs are. Mm. Especially EII will have a huge moral system of consistency as to how it works for them because they've rationalized it. And that's an example of how they've used their role function of TI to rationalize their feelings into a, a self-consistent ethical system. In, in your experience with these interviews, ha have you seen any other ILIs uh, able to articulate or rationalize their, uh, their FI? Ooh. Or do they struggle with it? They uh, all struggle with it, and they all want to improve it, especially someone like Thorain. He's from uh, Burma stroke Myanmar, Myanmar. Um, he's like done NLP for quite a while, and so he, he's, he, he, when he does like these events with Emily, Emily ESFP, him uh, NITX, INTJ, and you see both of them want to improve their backseat functions, their tertiary and their inferior. And uh, with uh, Thurain, like, yes, into the NLP. The NLP can help with these things. Dario is massively into NLP. So this is, I think, is huge. Huge to such an extent that, yes, I am showing a page from Dario Nardi's book without his permission because this page is so good. And it's all on FI. So I will let you read out. So if you read that out again, Enrique, and then stop whenever you want to comment on it. Um, that paragraph there, if? Yeah, yeah, the whole thing starting from, yeah, if, if the core of each process, yeah. Okay. If the core of each process is a unique representation system, then we can't say that extroverted sensing is about gathering facts or introverted feeling is about holding beliefs. Because Beliefs are just content, and content can be used in many ways. When using introverted feeling, we organize beliefs, facts, perceptions, values, tastes, feelings, and other data according to a very broad, flexible representation system called our personal identity. We then describe, refine, refer to, align, and share our personal identity and its content. I'll just say a bit there about about the difference between the content and the process. When he says there, content can be used in many different ways. So for example, with beliefs, you can also have beliefs run through TI. So for instance, with libertarianism, so there's so many, like David Cozy Jr. when he said the, in the presidential politics one, he says that any libertarian will sound like an NT. <laughs> because to him, the logic of libertarianism just sounds like NT logic. So I've got here, uh, the same content can be run through TI, and this was about, e.g., libertarians who Kersey Jr. said will say, wait a minute, I'll just do this magical thing, I'll turn it around. So, so Jr. said that, and this was about Gary Johnson's type, and he was running for president as the candidate for the Libertarian Party in 2016. He said that all libertarians are going to sound rational. But he said he guessed that he was an inventor rational, so ENTP. So he sees it as, so in other words, what I'm trying to get at is the libertarian philosophy seems very rational and very TI. So you can have beliefs run through a different process. You can go through the FI process of what feels right and what's within my values, but also through the TI process of what are the consequences of all of these things? What are the consequences of the Unpatriot Act and all of these things? How does it conflict with the principles? How is it consistent with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights? So you can get, you can look at the same thing with a different process. So this, this is why he's separating out values. Values is not. Values can also be got out and run through TI. Although that's not really the case in the STP. 
uh although their overall temperament would be an expedient so i then went a little bit oh yes so here i was sort of criticizing fi but what i was saying is it's so important that fi break is the most sociopathic so it's like when it's not there it can you can have a problem with being too expedient so so there i'm showing the process some love um this is how i think i think the role function of fi and x so eii i think they use ti a lot when they're using their ethics so fi and x can use ti a lot but it tends to be to rationalize their subjective feelings and then i'll give some examples of the things that they talk about especially about fairness and social justice rationalizing theft via the ballot box because libertarians would say yes and what are the consequences of all these things so even an FINX with TI better than the average TINX can have that TI corrupted by FI. And then, I'm not getting political here, but this is how it appears to me. Peter Schiff would say the left appeals to emotion, libertarians appeal to the intellect. And so he did that. He went to the convention in 2012 and he pretended to be a left winger and he went to, all, went to the delegates with the proposition to ban profits. And half of the people there, half of the delegates, agreed with banning profits. They wanted to eliminate the profit motive. So how does that work? If you TI that out, what are the consequences of that? <coughs> so they couldn't work out the consequences. All right, then. So what do you think of that, Enrico? <laughs> oh, it's, it's definitely interesting. Right? Yes. So if you look for those people look for that video, let's ban profits. <laughs> there is another example of Peter Schiff being the NTP. So this process here, because uh, you're interested in systems theory and you have experience with that. Do you think this is a good idea? Is this does this make sense to you? Like this sort of representation here of like listening mode, refer to a line and apply. Does that sort of ring true for you from a systems point of view? Refer to apply make behavior and beliefs congruent. Do I have a clear conscience? Kind of snapshot of introverted feeling. Yeah, that I think that makes sense. Um, I'd like to think about it more. Yeah. It would be interesting to run this through different Enneagram types. So, the personal identity thing, a little bit more E4-ish. Maybe with E1, their values are part of their identity. With the Enneagram type 1 and what they believe is right. So, it would be interesting to run this through with, you know, basically, to talk about FI, with a load of EIIs, but of different Enneagram types and instincts to sort of see how there's different flavors of FI, which makes sense because it's subjective feeling. It's going to be idiosyncratic to the person. Yeah, I, I think uh, being that I'm a type one on the Enneagram, ah. uh, it, 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 you know, people can... Uh, that perhaps confuse me for uh, uh, INFJ, and so they realize that I lack the, the FE. <laughs> yeah, so wait a minute. You say you want people to tell you how you should feel about something, yet also you identify as E1. Yes, because... That's a bit when, weird, weird combo. It, it's, it's a little weird. It's a little <laughs> weird, but once, once I have my, uh, my principles worked out, uh, yeah. I... I I try my best to live by them. Right. So you know that thing there about congruence? I put there NETX and SETX are weak at this because their beliefs are often selfish and or situational. They really do believe, and especially ESTP, that they are the most adaptable. And, and Morgan said that uh, TI is malleable. So whatever, the, whatever is right in the situation, 
So basically with them, the ends justify the means for ESTP. They're the number one type to like do whatever is necessary to achieve the goal, especially if it's like in the short term. So the very definition of the word expediency, people should really look up the word expediency and then how it's been used in a negative way. They, they might sometimes accuse a politician of being expedient, doing something to the best short term result. That is pretty much, and that's, this is maybe one of the reasons why there are so many ESDPs in uh, politics, besides them wanting the power. Many American presidents have resembled ESDP. Because uh, they can change their positions. Right. Right, that's interesting. So we can fully understand a cognitive process when we understand the representation system at its core. Actions, affect, and attitudes flow naturally from the processes we use because we tend to do what fits with them. So what I'm thinking is right here in the middle, maybe you could put the Enneagram type. Or this thing in the middle would be very much affected by Enneagram type. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's that's possible. the only thing that's going to... I mean, the Enneagram type is basically just what you're afraid of when it comes down to it. And what you're motivated by. So, Sana, what well, is yeah, the, but... what's the E1 afraid of? Are they afraid of being wrong, corrupted? I th think that's the idea, kind of, being evil. Being bad. Yeah. Is that what it's like for you? Oh, I've got some interest in there. So, high information. So if you're continually thinking about these kind of things and avoiding these kind of things, Enrique, that would be an example of having high information for FI. But not having the energy for it in terms of like, if you have to be consistent with it. But if you're, con if you, are you continually thinking about E1 things a lot? Because that would be consistent with launcher FI, having high energy, high, sorry, wow. high information for that function. When I um, when I start working on something, or let's say I'm writing code or whatever, and I have to decide on my approach, it would be it would be bad to not follow the best practices, for example. So I, you know, I apply. I always apply the best practices and that's like a continuous thing. So in, in, in that sense, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question accurately, but I, I think I apply it in a not so ethical manner. <clears throat> this is that bit I mentioned earlier on when I talked about TE working with FI. So if you read through this and comment on it, that would be great. That's the thing. The TE is the counting function, and the FI is, is it worth it? Yes. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Here's a, here's a, here's a funny example. <laughs> uh, when I was, uh, I think, uh, my early days, earlier days of uh, being a software developer, I encountered this, uh, I was told to take over this project and uh, I noticed that the, um, the code was, was riddled with spaces instead of tabs. Right. Right, and it's, it's, I mean, the code is going to function the same way, but it's it's like it's inefficient to have all those <laughs> spaces because it makes the file bigger. So I I, I actually went through the whole process of uh, changing all the spaces to tabs, yeah. and it's uh, I guess that's that's very enneagram one. I think is uh, perfectionism and. Yeah. Uh, Maybe the actual hard. value, as you said there, the actual value of making that change didn't actually increase the efficiency 
um, the aptitude of it, but it's like the E1 reasons. <laughs> so it's like yeah. the F5 was a little bit on the blink there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So th there's an example then. So that's a good example that you're given where if the FI was a little bit stronger, it would go to the TE. And it's like, that's not important. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I would never do that now because that would be just a, a waste of my life. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's one uh, an example that I, that I thought of that kind of relates to this. Right, so it's a little bit tricky to show it on screen. So I'm just going to, if people look at this uh, graphic, when it said, I said region F8. Uh, so that's that one. Up there. Where it says place personal value and attend to literal details. So that part of the brain is active when Dario, it's not the tests FPs. And he uh, asks some like ethical things. That bit is active, and in the STPs, that bit doesn't really get active. And and he oh. showed how the activity of INFP in his system, in Linda Bones' system, is the opposite from ESTP. So usually, and usually, the ESTP in one system is similar to the ESTP in another. So uh, so their opposite should be similar as well. All right. Um, so next one is going in order. We've done that one. Aha, this one. So if you read through this and comment whenever you feel like it. Oh, I might need to adjust it because there might be a little bit. It might be covering it up a little bit. There we go. Right, so just with plus V, just like the, the positive aspects of it and the negative aspects of it. So it's like, what is great about FI and what is bad about FI? So nothing related to the actual charges. It's just like the pros and cons of the function. And what I mean by FI polar is bad is that <laughs> when it's absent, you really notice when it's absent and it's like, oh, I'll put that piece back in because it was useful. Yeah, I think I relate to uh, positive more. Mm. Um, I definitely have an... Uh, There's this artist artistic bent that I, uh, as you say, they're good for the arts. Yeah, and it's 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 not very easy to understand why. Like for me, I don't. I, it's hard to understand the connection between F I and and art, but like, you know. I was playing my guitar yesterday yeah. and I just felt like playing guitar, but I, I, I was trying to work it out. Like there's nothing logical about that. So I was trying to understand why I wanted to play guitar. I couldn't really figure it out. <laughs> If you think about, in terms of arts, if you think of, like, the FI DOMs, they have something to express. And they express the, their personal idiosyncratic things about things through that. The things they want people to, like, a message. With ISFP, it will be... What I get from Pat Patterson is that it's more integrated, this prosody, where it's like you get that single message across and it's all integrated working together, all different aspects of a song and the music, and you get that idea across. Um, even if it's just like a sentiment, say when Paul McCartney wrote and he had it in a dream yesterday, so the whole song is like that nostalgic, expressing that sense of nostalgia. 
and it, it's quite E four ish. The E four ish kind of FI. You sort of what I mean by that about being good for the arts. That sort of like as the aspect of self expression or wanting to get a sort of theme out there, because generally FI people, especially FI doms, they're not so much about getting on a soapbox and expressing it with like the fe voluble kind of thing you know like enfj would where they can actually literally express it through rhetoric what they want to do they don't need to do it through art so the self-expression aspects of it i would think does that make sense Anna? yeah i, I do both yeah uh, the fi and the the other one for the IE I described. Right then, so, so, uh, are, what sort of things? Depends if you want to talk about it or not, Enrique. But what sort of things do you would you say do you have a conscience about? What sort of things, the sort of like things that are important to you, that you're willing to say? Um, that I have a conscience about. Yeah. That I have a conscience about. I mean, not not so much about cleaner. We know that much, but <laughs> 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 but what is important to you, in other words, like that you want to be like congruent with certain principles that you want to stick with, because you do identify with E one after all. Yes. Uh, I like to finish what I start. So that's uh. I try my best to live by that. Whatever, whatever I start, I, ha I, I have to finish it. I don't like things being unfinished. Um, uh, we're getting into some slime. Yeah. Uh, so what is, how does it literally make you feel when it's unfinished? It's like, uh, I don't know. It just keeps get... it keeps nagging at me. Like finish right. it, get it done, get it done. It's like do you, do you almost feel like I need to complete this? I have put all this effort in. Yeah, because if I don't complete it, if I don't yeah. complete it, then that mean that would make the time that I spent on it a waste. Right. So, it's a but lot there's of... also that feeling there as well, like nagging away. It's like yeah, gotta get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I, I wasn't very prepared for this. No, I think uh, you've expressed it well. Hey, spot the deliberate righto. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe over personalizes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you're this is essentially asking about my, my values right yeah i mean that you want to disclose i mean you... um or you could talk about them without actually saying what they are if you like well if if, if i had them ready in my mind I, I the problem is finding them right but they're definitely there because of the they're, e1 they're, they're I, there I, I think he reacts strongly when one is encountered. So it's hard to talk about it theoretically unless right. there is an actual issue at hand. Whereas in comparison, EII would like have that like system there worked out. Yeah. They have thought about their values and uh, they've gone. And also, I think TI DOMS are doing the same thing as well. Like you probably experienced that with the LSI. Where, yeah, like, definitely. It's like uh, they just they just come out. It doesn't they clearly don't have to organize their thoughts in that right. moment because they are already set. And that's their mindset of I little J, the balanced, stable mindset where it's all thought about and it's static. That it's worked out and it's static. Unless, unless something goes completely wrong with the mental model and they have to adjust their map, 
in a, so with them it's like revolutionary whereas with uh, the dynamic types it's a flow a gradual change of uh so yeah i'll ask you about that mvk how much do you think your values change i mean what happens with it with what happens when the te says that's wrong do you resist it or is it like okay i gotta throw that value out the window and switch to another one so what what's sort of your relationship like between a belief and then the real world and then what the real world says about what you think in terms of well i want to think this but the real world says it doesn't work yeah that's i mean if it doesn't work it doesn't work there's nothing else to think about um i think uh this is a good example um when i was growing up i i wanted to be uh <laughs> i was really into comic books and, and i wanted to to be an, an artist so i would draw and draw and draw and draw uh and then uh i went to art school and i realized that uh i, I was I, I couldn't compete you would suspect I was, that uh, huh Oh, I thought she said something. Um, yeah, I, I realized that I, I couldn't really compete. So, and and these these people that are around you, you know, the the other students, they're you're gonna they're gonna be your competition when you graduate. So, um, it just seemed like the wrong path. So, I still do like art, but I do it more as a hobby, and then uh, I. Yeah, so that that's a good example, right? Yeah. Of, of you know, T T being in charge of the FI, T, yeah, yeah. So so it just I just changed and started studying something else and computers, and there but, you go. But your preference is still coming through in your free time, as you said there, wanting to do the art part time, just not professionally. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, every, the tea is coming into play. Yeah. Every now and then, when all my work is done and uh, you know I have free time, I, I grab my guitar and I just you know, or maybe I'll draw something. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so then is uh... so so this is how I see the sort of like. Uh, the, the pros and cons of FI. Do you see it like this, though, when you see it in other people? Do you see the pros and cons the way I've presented them here? Or or how do you see the negative side of FI? I definitely think that projection is a real problem, but I don't necessarily tie it to FI. I think everybody does it. Right. Uh, I do feel that if I, when it's very strong and obvious, it can come across as judgy, and I don't, yeah. I don't like that. I, I think for me, it's more like uh, it's it's an important important part, but I don't want to talk about it all the time. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um... I'll just say one thing, you can get some INFP resemblers or EII resemblers where they have really strong feelings, but they don't really express them because of the, like the extroverted feeling, uh, sorry, the extroverted sensing problem that it's low for them and they don't want the conflict with people. Whereas, so there are some that it's like they really keep those strong feelings to themselves because they dislike conflict, conflict so much. Uh, and then Better it was uncomfortable. So it was actually, uh, but but if you have a situation, and it was actually Hannah that talked about a situation with, um, if people want to know about this, you go watch the Catherine Farber number three, where Hannah talks about a certain situation where somebody said something and the ISFP nurses reacted a lot more strongly than the INFP nurses because of the extroverted sensing there. Yeah, I, I think that's true. Uh, usually if, uh, well, um, 
I can only speak for MBTI ISFPs because I don't yeah, actually know fine. any Solcionics or Cursi for that matter. Um, but MBTI ISFPs, they seem to, it's like the FI is more obvious and, and somehow stronger in that it, it's, um, I think INFPs, MBTI INFPs tend to take a longer time to come to their conclusions before they conclude. Whereas the ISFPs that I've known, they the process is faster and they can actually, they can't even go back and forth between different stances. Yeah. Because they, they, they judge, 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 and then they get more information and they, they change the information changes the stance. Right. It just keeps happening. Yeah, because they're situational, but they have the instinct. I remember I went through the Socionics ESI on Wikisocion. It mentioned impulse and stuff. It's just that the one in Model G is a little bit. It's not. It's not like. Uh, it's not like Kersey ISFP or MBTI ISFP. It, it's a little bit like a hardcore guardian kind of type. Yeah, it's it's like, the, uh, yeah. They have like moral, firm moral opinions. But the type is very, and it's even, he even calls it the Guardian. So it's weird trying to talk about ESI. That would have to be a separate hangout unto itself. I'm guessing that it's not that they have stronger opinions. It's just that it's they more visible. It. Yeah. And stand up for it and will use the force. To stand yeah, up because it comes with out with force instead of with any. Yeah. With any and Solcionics is always, well, MBTI also, it's always going to be. Mm looking for alternative mm. yep. ways of, you know. Yeah, so it's like I, an EII might also have the position of, well, I think this is right, but I can also understand these other points of view. It's just that I feel that yeah. I'm right. Yeah, whereas, whereas the, uh, <laughs> with, uh, with SC, it's just going to be, it's yep. going to come out. Yep. Right then, so self-centered all of these things so people can see all these things on screen we not we could just do a whole hangout just based on this sheet here's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a, how i see it uh, <laughs> catherine tim is a libertarian on the greg gutfeld show and so she's spoofing a feminist here and so she did go outside men's warehouse don't man interrupt me yeah she's also a comedian Take your microaggressive mansplanations elsewhere. I'm going to stand here and protest until it becomes everyone's warehouse. <laughs> I don't see um, MBTI, INFP, um, doing <laughs> this kind of <laughs> confrontational. <laughs> right, then here's an, then what happened here. <laughs> it's, I deliberately, like, I would censored them, but like, and this is in an INFP group. <laughs> um, and it, so like I said, I was talking about, we did this. Jonathan and I did this. We went over Trump. We actually literally measured him against the psychopathic scale. And he was on the scale, but he didn't qualify as a psychopath. There's a very interesting uh, hangout. It was just basically, it's like average E8. But as Jonathan said, the average is... He thinks the average type in the Enneagrams is neurotic and the unhealthy is psychotic. Um, right, there we go. And then there was this bit here. And then Karen. We don't need a test to tell us what his words and behaviors already convey. Have an extra INFP point. Right. <laughs> and then she said, no, <laughs> okay, you have one too. Right. Right, this bit's interesting. I actually think so. How true is this? So, if you go through this, um, Enrique, and then we can see how because just the general thing about introversion and, and people, I think this is quite true. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. Is it why is it just introverts though? Yeah, it would be interesting to see this with extroverts and then there's the, the, just people. Yeah, and then it's like this is how they view other people. This one, on the other hand, is is probably introverts. Yeah. <laughs> Things you keep inviting me to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'd like a copy of that one. <laughs> right, okay, remind me afterwards and I'll send it to you. Yeah, this is one, I mean, this is one of the few good introvert one graphics out there because usually they are um, not the best. Oh, right, something about values. This is interesting. This is sort of an NLP version of things. Uh, so if you read through, now this is written by an LSI or ISTP, take your pick. Victor, Victor um, types John Grinder as LSI. So if you read through this, then we can sort of get an idea of, so this is like the LSI version of FI. So remember the LSI being any break. Wait, what? Break, LSI? Yeah, no. any break. Oh, so in like they're actually yeah. against the actual concept of you. So if you read through that, um, Renrique, from the bit where it says beliefs help to organize one's life. Beliefs help organize one's life and criteria provide the glue of coherence. Belief is a generalization where we've made up ourselves and the world that we are convinced in is true. Beliefs are organized around values and are usually rules about how to achieve or avoid important values. Uh, beliefs, yeah, this topic of beliefs is... <clears throat> All right. Beliefs drive our behavior and are mostly unconscious. We do not question our need for oxygen. We have similar attitude towards our beliefs. Whoever discovered water, you can be sure it was not a fish. We are similar. We are in a similar situation in relation to our beliefs. We don't think very much about them and are rarely conscious of them until they are brought to our attention. That last bit is definitely true for me. Right. It's not for me. I feel like I do this too much. I don't. I, I'm always I, questioning my beliefs. Yeah, I have trouble I, I just being keep working. <laughs> yeah, see how the any break in NSI really wants the specifics of the situation. They don't want these general rules from context to context to context because they see it as a filter on the present experience. So what do you think about this generalization and then this here? Of, a criterion, a value that provides the basis or standard upon which people evaluate experience. Criteria are values around which people organize beliefs. Agree with that? A value that provides a basis or standard upon which people evaluate experience. I mean, that's just how he, I mean, that's how he defines it. Mm. So that's uh, what, he, you know, Maybe this is a very beta thing to say, but I mean, I just, if that's that's the definition he uses, then that's what he uses. So I'm not going to argue his definitions. Is this is this similar way of thinking, similar to the LSI that you know, Sana, or LSIs in general? Well, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, on a, on a, like a very general level. But this is obviously a very different topic than anything I've discussed. Yeah. So we've got here about uh, again. So this, again, so NLP has these little insights on how we use the functions. Just sort of like gives us some extra understanding. This was definitely written by an LSI. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what draws your attention to that then? Okay. The dictionary style of writing it's mm -hmm. uh being precise uh, yeah it's it's like um i i mean yeah precision is important obviously right but there there's there's a line where it, you're 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 starting to affect you don't have the, to be the, precise about trivial it, stuff yeah like it's it's Part of it is that this is not actually, this is sort of filtered through. So it's like the founder of NLP was LSI, but this book's written by two women, Murray Spalding and uh, Annie Linden, no relation to Carol. So, but it does very much reflect the thinking of John Grinder. 
It's just that they're not as good a writer as that guy that I showed you before. You know the one about rapport? That was written by Tony Robbins, who's very articulate, whereas this book is a bit technical. So he'd probably spend a whole chapter on this and explain it better and give loads of sort of anecdotal examples. So, Ben, what does it feel like for you to read this uh, LSI text? Well, to me, it makes me think of wow, this guy's really against the transcontextual thinking. He's really against <laughs> the generalizations. And it does, and it is useful for me to know when I'm doing it. So when mm -hmm. I'm aware of it, whereas for me, I'm like, no, this is a principle across these situations, right? People have the number one natural right is the right to self-defense. Because if you don't have that right, you are an object. So... So yeah, it, it basically, basically, you're saying it helps you spot your own transcontextual thinking. Yeah, and it also helps me see it in NFPs because I see this also as like a criticism because it's like the opposing quadra. It's this is like criticizing because LSIs think that NFPs can't think properly in terms of their values. They think that their value, their ration, they rationalize these beliefs and they're not thinking clearly. So it's like all of the things in the meta model, which is like logical mistakes people make in their in their uh, in their in their sort of verbal arguments. It sounds like a critique of NFPs because I've heard, I've heard this. That's what SDPs. That's how they talk about the NFPs, pretty much. Where it's like they don't like because they're very specific. They're situation specific and expedient. And the NFPs they want to have the same ethics across different situations. Yeah, yeah, I think I have uh, to... effectiveness Sorry. goes out the window once uh, you focus too much on these definitions. I mean, like, I don't know. I, I've, I, I, and yeah. I read a lot of technical material. Yeah, it's like the, there's there's a line where where if you're if you're so precise where you're defining every single word you're yeah. using. Uh, how, is, how effective is that to the reader? Right. That's, there's a little difference there between the TI DOMs and uh, certainly INTJ, uh, ILI. Right, I think this bit's good about, again, Belize personal significance. In it, but how about this bit here, though? Beliefs are held, yeah, go on. Beliefs are held strong and constant by a person's particular filters. The subjective experience of an achievement or avoidance of highly valued criteria that reinforce the belief and the ability to delete or distort experiences that would be counter examples to the belief. Uh, hmm. That sounds a little dodgy. This, ex this is accomplished by the person's individual constellation of meta program filters and his or her complex equivalence of criteria yeah it's the same people have people have biases which is obvious to me the only way to avoid a bias is to be aware that you have it yeah but what i found with nlp is that and especially when it gets to these things with errors in people and when i showed this to Haley, it's like well, the INTs do this naturally. <laughs> They're already dissecting people's arguments and finding all of the errors. So this particular aspect of NLP, we sort of already know. Um, but this kind of deleting information and got, going towards information that contradicts the way you see yourself and your values, that is a thing amongst NFPs, especially those ones that have not developed the TE. Because I do it's know... It's a thing among... A lot of people, not just uh, NFPs. Yeah, it, it's a human thing. Yes, we believe what I mean. We see what we want to believe. Yeah, and Enrique is a good example of somebody. He's running all this through the filter of TE. Yeah, yeah obviously, the strong filter though in his case. Yeah, I mean, not all filters are negative. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the meta model. I'll just go through this. I'll just quickly say what they are without explaining. So deletions, we've got nominalizations. So that's changing a process into a noun. 
even when it's not real. So, for instance, uh, someone might use an abstraction and cause it a noun. So, independence. So you, you you've taken a uh, you you it's an abstract noun. It's not a real thing. So, like I said, very LSI. So you've got so he thinks information is deleted if you turn it into a normalization. You've got unspecified verb where you leave out how something was done. Lack of referential index where you leave out when someone says better than well better than what compared to what oh yeah that would be comparative deletion uh, I wonder if NLP works particularly well for LSIs because they take it literally what is being said I, I yeah. don't think it necessarily works that well for me because I'm going to be thinking about the part that's left out or changed anyway well these bits won't these bits these bits here a lot but it's like the bit the nlp that would work for you is all the stuff about setting goals and getting towards goals all the stuff related to the te part of nlp because nlp together is a selection of techniques that have been called from expert therapists so mm. certain aspects of it is going to be like well duh that's obvious yeah i, I suppose it, it would make sense that not all of it is going to work for a single person Plus beliefs. I mean, NF, you, you're going through all this anyway. You have competence in this thing. But, uh, oh, yeah, then this sort of things to like identify beliefs. And again, this is from the Enneagram and NLP book. That's, and again, that's somebody else's sloppy highlighting. Mine is more accurate than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to point that out. So, yeah, I'm going to get too much on beliefs. I'm going to do NLP in future. Okay, we did that bit before with Carl Jung. We went through that. Uh, we went through that. Oh, that this is what they think. So this bit was not quite right. So this is an ex these are the kind of things you get on the internet where they where it's said that in the Beeb model the demon function is the weakest. So that would be the role function. But I asked Carol about this. Carol ends and she says, "No, that is not what John Beebe actually said. He said that this this function can be improved a lot, and so that's why it's got two names: demon stroke daemon." because it's good when it goes into daemon mode. Yeah, see, I, now, now we're getting into the area where I have my reasoning why I don't like that model. It's right. just to, I just why, don't see the point. Why don't you like it? I, I don't see, I don't see it working. I think it's a lot of theory with no actual application and no real no real connection to how people actually work. Oh, that's good. Obviously, I, I could be you. wrong, but it's just what I've seen. I mean, I'll give you some TE points for that <laughs> because it doesn't it doesn't work to real people. But yeah, I'll give you some TE <laughs> points. You're judging it based on its effectiveness rather than the consistency of the model. Well, I mean, if you have a system about people, then obviously that system has to work on the people yeah the point otherwise right so um so th there's a little bit of a reference in certain aspects of this because like things that people measure in terms of interpersonal and intrapersonal intelligence so what about this bit for you the intrapersonal stuff enrique connect to self make authentic choices yes yep if i um There, there are some, uh, sometimes, not often, but sometimes I, I get this strong impulse of like, uh, no, don't do that. And yeah. I, and, I, and I don't, I, I can't really work out why, but I uh, typically, if I ever go against that, it's, it's, I find out why really fast. So I, I listen to that, um, and uh, I, it's 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 very. Uh, I would categorize that as uh, FI for sure. Why because FI it's, and it's, not NI? You know. uh, because it's it's when I feel that way, it's 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 not really. I don't. I don't know what the cause or the effect is at that time. It's more like a, a misalignment 
with with uh, myself. If that makes it, any sense, it does make a lot of sense. That's how I work a lot of the time. I'm just wondering why it's not. I mean, are you always aware of the reasoning for your NI insights? Am I always aware of the reasoning of my NI insights? Um, well, with enough time, I can I can work out the the logic behind it. But I, I'm talking about like those those moments where yeah, this is hard for me to. <laughs> well, since it's hard for you, then yeah, it's probably a fi. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense too. So this to me, sort of, uh, this has probably been written by a, a Delta NF, this graphic, like putting naturalist in there. There used to be seven kinds of intelligence, but they've slotted therein. Remember the SI union? Because to me, if you contrast these two, bodily kinesthetic with naturalist, naturalist seems a bit more SI. Look how passive it is, taking in the experience caring for maybe the explore there's a little bit of any in there but look how active this is in bodily kinesthetic <laughs> much like the so the, that's, there's a little difference there between se activities and si activities wow so uh, so the interpersonal so i would think for these enrique that ili are best doing this when it's with the few people that they know now, interestingly enough, Dario has been forced to do that in his role when he's like teaching computing or doing webinars and things. So it's like he's had to go beyond his natural preference. So it's like, as we said with you, so it's like he's, his role enactment and plus with a lot of years of NLP as well. And, and, he, and like, if you're doing webinars for over 10 years and you've been doing, you've been teaching computer students over 10 years, then you're going to get better at some of the skills associated with FE. But it's going to be in a way which is, it's going to be in a technical way. A technical equivalent of FE, rather than the natural thing coming across. Right then, so, oh yeah, well, once I get back to the position, there's something interesting here from um, a quote from Game of Thrones about a character. And I was initially I thought, is this FI break? But then it made me think. Oh, well, I think that Jamie Lannister is ESFP. I think he resembles ESFP. Just this quote here. It's almost as if the vowels are an FE thing, because it's like it's external ethics in like yes. Beta Quadra. You must vow to do this. You must vow to do that. That first. That first uh, question is, it's, it sounds very uh, FI, FI-ish. It's like- It's an uh, FI question, asked by an FI user. Yeah. Yeah, like it's, it's the same way how I, I, I would react that way if I felt that someone was being uh, fake or not truly themselves or uh, contradicting. Uh, I'll just say something that's very important. He killed the king. The king was about to burn down. I was going to say Knott's Landing, <laughs> but I was a soap. King's Landing because they found all the all the wildfire. I, know, some, some, I can't forget what they called the green stuff that's explosive in King's Landing. He killed the king because he was about to burn down the whole city. And he was called Kingslayer. So he's actually a good guy. And I think my prediction for how the series is going to end is he is going to kill his sister. And then he will kill himself. I don't I don't watch this show or read the books. So I no. actually have no idea what you're talking about. Right. So it's on record. That is my prediction. He will kill his sister, then kill himself. He will kill the person who loves more than anyone in the whole world. And then everyone will realize that Jamie Lannister is the best character. Okay. All right. So what do you think about this, the way he's rationalized this, Enrique? I, did, I think he's right. I, mean, I think he's right as well. It shouldn't matter what you 
swear to do. It should matter the core of your conviction is what matters. Yeah. So it's like it's, it's almost ridicule in the fact that look at all these extroverted ethics things that I have to um, swear obedience to and they can and they contradict each other. I, I have trouble seeing this as uh, a fee stuff, but maybe I'm just not fee enough because this is not how I see it. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sort of looking at it out of the context of the fact that he escaped and he went back and he rescued Brienne. So it's like character in action. He decided to go back and rescue her when it was to his disadvantage. But he did all of these things that were not uh, to his advantage, where he decided not to kill Ned Stark because he wouldn't have been a clean kill. Although that's a little bit of a an effy thing of like what it would look like to other people in terms of the killing. Anyway, we don't want to go too much on that. Right, so that's just the taster. Um, we've done all that SI stuff. Now we're going to go back to... Now we can talk about the position. <laughs> and then I'll go on to the bullet points. I think that's what's... Oh, wait a minute. There's this little bit here. Value... What about them? Well, this is still SI. Yeah, no, we were just oh, doing the FI bit. Right. Okay. Is that so, true to say, or is it? Or is it? Is it? Is it true? Is it okay to pin it on that, or does it sound too much like MBTI FI? Well, I think we we discussed before how they are tied. Yeah. So it's a little complicated. Like, how much should you include in it? Yeah. Also, uh, baby. Go on. Yeah, I wish I would have said those things when you asked me about uh, values, because all of those things there. Or most of them. Right. Yeah. So you do you think all of those things are a good thing? Important to you? Important to me. Well, maybe not too important, but important the varying yeah. varying degrees of importance. Yes, yes, I would agree to that. And I suppose with sentiment your personal sentiment rather than these group sentiments or yes for sure right right so there's all so this so now i'm going to get to this so we know it's got very little energy for it but this idea that it has and again it's equivalent to the tertiary look at that. but what we're going to think about here is Right, this bit here, number two. So do you, so as an E1, are you, you're not thinking, about, is it like there in the background pretty much all the while? Like these sort of like, sort of your own standards that you're sort of like holding yourself to? Uh, yeah. Mm hmm Right. I, uh, I try my best not to ever go against my standards. And I don't really care who who is uh, attempting to get me to go against them. It could be, you know, yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah. So if the audience wants to pause this, this is just a reminder for the audience about patterns rather than uh, fitting somebody into a tight box. But you know, the patterns patterns are there with some people, and some people are harder to type. Uh, now we're going to go to the bullet points. I think they're there. And again, there's that Dario video. There's the, it's a good video that is because we're sort of like testing Model G and asking Dario about the various shadow positions and see if they actually match up with Model G. And so from his point of view, this TI here is something that can be strong with development. And in his own example, he had to develop a lot of TI when he was doing like all the systems science stuff and being surrounded by LIIs when he did his PhD. Right then, so FI plus. Oh, did I? Oh yeah, here's a little bit of definition on the the way Victor defines it anyway. It's a little bit black and white. 
FI plus is great, FI minus is like. Yeah, that's a really healthy EII. <laughs> the humanist. I think uh, I do. I do a bit of both, but I, I I think I'm more. Man, this one's this one's tough. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, it's oh, a little bit. Yeah. It's not exactly the most. Um, nuanced description of FI. Yeah, I really... So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit too uh, stark a difference. Um, this one's quite interesting. Is a function that shapes modest and empathetic behavior. That's an interesting definition. Mm. And I think I think I agree with it because if if you lack it, then it's your your you just don't give a crap. Mm. It's like the opposite. Yes, Kersey wrote about ESTP <clears throat> that that they can appear empathetic, but the opposite, the direct opposite, is is just that when they're in the mode of reading somebody's body language. They can appear to be very empathetic in terms of noticing what's going on in the person, but no, they're just very attentive to the emotions being shown. And of course, if you had them there with somebody who could act well, then they're only going to pick, pick up the emotions that are shown rather than what is truly going on inside somebody. But again, when you're actually picking up on what somebody's going on inside somebody, what you're really doing is you're taking the expression in the context and then implying things from the expression based on the context of what they're saying and what you know about the person and making those connections. It's not a magical process of seeing into, side, into somebody's psyche. Mm. What about that on number one? It's a bit deterministic, like FI plus, <laughs> and then <laughs> there's no need to go into details, but do you like the idea of that, the security of a good relationship? I guess it would be nice. Right. Yeah. No need for details. How about number two? Maybe easygoing and peaceful when not pestered or subjective to lots of drama. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say that's accurate. Um, <laughs> Number two sounds like it's almost written by an ally. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a lot for old friends. Yeah, I've certainly uh, done my fair share of helping or attempting to help solve problems for is there any way to so, where you could feeling. could you like give us an idea of some of the problems like say if they're on a physical level then because because that will give us an idea of how much effort you put in <laughs> okay well i i once uh one of my good friends in new york uh, he was struggling with you know, he didn't really have the best job and he didn't really make a lot of money and he wanted to improve his his life. So I just told him it's very easy. All you have to do is pick something you like and then pick something you're good at. And, and, and if they match, then buy books on that subject, study, and get some type of certification and apply for jobs and you know there's 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 an algorithm for this that works rather well uh so i proceeded and i uh 
I bought him, I think, I bought him like four books. Right. Uh, at the time, I was thinking that he <laughs> he would read as much as I do, uh, but that was not the case. What's the name of the books? People, some people watching my. Oh, uh, he he was interested in computers, so oh, I, right. I bought him. You know, uh, he wanted to be. He wanted to learn how to uh, fix computers. So I told him you could start with that, and if you want to become an engineer, you know, that's going to take more time. But I think if if you quickly learn how to fix computers, then that's something that you can learn quickly and uh, get a job quickly. So uh, quickly being, you know, a few months. Right. So uh, so yeah, I, I bought him. I got him those type of books. And I did go through this whole, I, I was making sure that the books weren't very, <laughs> a computer book, I was trying to find a computer book that, that wasn't as technical, which right. was not easy. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of effort, um, zero payoff, but there was an attempt. Right. <clears throat> so you put the time in yes. to help him out. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm going to give you some FI points there. Yeah. Um, so what about number four? Like to spend time in close company of friends, enjoying food and drink along with conversation, card game, or other intellectually stimulating activity. Uh, yeah, that's very true. Um, I actually just came from New York, and I was uh, hanging out with one of my best friends, and... Yeah, it was pretty fun. I mean, read some books, played uh, some chess, played some video games, <laughs> handball. Yeah, a bunch of the stuff that uh, we always used to do. So, the, the 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 things that you mentioned before handball sounded so ILO. I read some books, played some chess. Played some computer games. Well, yeah, this is uh, <laughs> how fun is defined. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I mean that, that thing there, number five. Yeah, I mean that sort of like runs together with the uh, uh, your true story that you told us. When approached with a problem, will usually do their best to help. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's a little too much because. Uh, when I, it's funny, like people that don't know me or aren't close to me, they'll see me as a very cold person. Yeah. But it, to people that I'm really close to, I, I, I actually, uh, yeah, that's no exaggeration. I, I try my best yeah. to help them. And, uh, sometimes it's a waste of time. Sometimes it's not, uh, the one guy I, I helped. Uh, he was a handball player. Yeah. Um, and he was studying uh, to be a, a developer. I was already a, a pretty uh, ma made a name for myself in the business, so I uh, I decided to mentor him, and now he's quite successful at it. So it's yeah. you win and you lose. So mm -hmm. in that instance, it was not a waste of time. But um, yeah, I. I I helped them out quite a bit. Uh, we would meet every weekend and we'd have these, you know, study sessions where I would show him different techniques of uh, software development, have him solve different problems, you know, like really help him uh, get better at the craft. So, right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, number six, their love of uh, oh, love, all right, their, their love of <laughs> peace uh, steers them towards tolerance and away from drastic solutions. Well, that's interesting. It might be a little bit deterministic because it's like FI plus is in this slot. FI plus is being about great to people, therefore. I'm writing number six. So sometimes these things are a little bit determined by the nature of the function. 
Yeah. yeah. I wonder if if these definitions take into account the position of the <laughs> of the function. Yeah, they do a lot a lot they of do. times, but okay. Love of peace steers them towards tolerance. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to think, okay, if I'm in a situation where... Well, you don't like drama, of, do you? So if you think I, of peace as the opposite of drama. Yeah, I really don't. So if I, if I see some type of drama or nonsense happening, I am going to find a way to minimize it. Mm in a way that doesn't risk making it worse. Uh, yeah. So maybe you could put, not so much their love of peace, their hatred of drama <laughs> steers them towards yeah. tolerance. <laughs> that, that's more accurate, I think. <laughs> right then, so that's pretty much... These are some lines in my stage play, which if you go to the cover photo on my homepage, you will be able to find. So, have you read through these before, Enrique? Your stage play, uh, not this one. Gordon French. By my dream. Give me a moment to. You do stage plays. Well, it's just the one at the moment. There we go. All right then. So, and then there's. Folks, can, if you go down to the homepage, folks, you'll see lots of different shelves of playlists, and you can click on these lines here, the shelf titles, and it will expand and show you a lot of, of extra information. So, for example, if this one here, when it says A to Z of guests, if you click on that line, then it will expand, and it will show you all of these people. If you just click on that line, so the expands out. So that's the way to use things. There's Creel's message about how to use socionics. So then I will end there. And I'll go back to Enrique. I'll try and find you in the... So then, was that of any use, this Hangout? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say so. <laughs> right, very good. What was the biggest thing that you learnt? The biggest thing that I learned, or maybe clarified, uh, I think I I want to study NLP a little more, mm. um, and I should probably uh, make a list of my 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 principles, yeah, and just grow it over time and uh, one of the biggest takeaways for me practical takeaways for me is to continue to uh, well I shouldn't say continue because currently I'm not but <laughs> pay more attention to uh, my SI I would also think that with your values if you put them in a hierarchy and then think about if any of them clash together and what would happen in that situation, what would happen uh, in various situations if you've got a clash of values. Get them into a hierarchy. What is the most important thing? And then just work your way down. Mm, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Or maybe <clears throat> the hierarchy of values might change depending upon the situation. So, and maybe if you are too rigid about having a hierarchy, then you might realize, oh, I need to adapt to the situation. So it's that little blend, isn't it, between being adaptable and being principled. So it's when you have to know to stick to your principles and when you have to know to adapt. 
and maybe some principles you're willing to adapt and compromise more than others. Yeah. I suppose that's what it is from a practical point of view. Yeah. And then another thing is like writing down appointments and things. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and sticking to them. Right then. So was it useful for you, Sana? Or just typical me? <laughs> oh, that's useful. Okay. So with that hearty endorsement, I will uh, end the broadcast. So it's goodbye from me. Bye. Have a good one. And from those two NI dogs. <laughs>